And here are the Louisville Cardinals in the brand new landscape of college football. Entering a new league with new hopes. Lofty goals. We're here at Papa John Stadium, Louisville, Kentucky. The first meeting ever between the Pac-10's Oregon State Beavers and the number 11 Louisville Cardinals. Combined, they've won 13 consecutive games. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones, along with Chris Spielman. Thanks for coming aboard, Chris. In this brand new age of college football, we find Louisville in a new league, and for the first time ever, the highest hopes ever for this program. They're talking about a national championship. Well, they should talk about a national championship. Why? Because it's timing. It's timing about going into the Big East. The Big East is down, Louisville's up. They have better athletes than any other school in the Big East. They have a schedule that's conducive to them winning the Big East, then going off to possibly compete for a national championship. And it starts with Brian Brom, the quarterback, sophomore quarterback, basically a legacy here in Louisville. His dad played, his brother played, two brothers played. He's got all the tools, yet he's young sophomore. So he needs to grow if this team wants to compete for a national championship. Now, Chris, on the other side of the equation, Oregon State has won five consecutive games dating back to last year coming in. And probably one of the top players in the nation that not many people know about, too, at wide receiver Mike Hatt. And We talk about it. It's the best receiver you've never heard of in Mike Hatt. He's 6'1", 208 pounds. Now, he's not overly quick, but he is fast enough. A lot of guys don't catch him from behind. Watch him today. He runs great routes, and he's super strong when he catches the football. He cut for over 1,300 yards receiving a year ago. And Mike Riley is the head coach at Oregon State, former head coach of the San Diego Chargers and USC Trojans, now up coaching in the same town that he grew up in in his fifth season at Oregon State. Oregon State has won the toss. They defer to the second half. Louisville will receive, and that is Broderick Clark back deep. Alexis Cerna will kick off for Oregon State. Turner, one of the greatest comeback stories in all of college football dating back to a year ago. We'll tell you more about his story a little bit later in the broadcast. Louisville has won eight consecutive games dating back to last year. Oregon State has won five straight. A very stern test today for both squads, and we are underway at Papa John Stadium. Clark at the goal line. Clark brought down across the 20 at the 22-yard line. That's where Brian Brom will take the reins of this Louisville offense. 6'4", 224 pounds, a sophomore coming into this game, completing 70% of his passes. Started off red hot last week, actually a couple of weeks ago, in their only game that they've played so far against Kentucky. He was 10 of 11 in the first half of play. But there were some questions at the end of that game because Louisville's offense may have sputtered just a little bit in the second half. It is first down and 10 from the 22-yard line. A single back formation. Three wideouts for Louisville. Michael Bush now going in motion. It's an empty formation. Brom on a quick three-step drop. Bush brings it down across the 35, and that's a first down. And let's take a look at the... Maybe for men's starting lineups, Montrell Jones had a nice week a couple of weeks ago against Kentucky. Bush is the team's leading rusher. And on the offensive line, it's Lefew, Spitz, Wood, Porterman, and Darbo. First down and 10 for the Cardinals, just across the 35-yard line at the 36. A pickup of 14 yards on first down. It's one of the versatilities that Louisville's both backs, both Bush, and Taylor can get out in the backfield. They set up the screen. This is Smith, and Smith got sacked back at the 29-yard line. Good read that time. Sir Henry Anderson, one of the first ones there. Let's take a look at the guys up front for Oregon State. Actually, those are the linebackers, a very good linebacking crew, Ellison, Bray, and Doggett. Up front, Lewis, Piscatelli, Heron, and Lawson. Those two corners there, Lawson and Lewis, in the secondary will be tested severely today. That's going to be one of the big questions, yeah. Chris. That's the type of defense they play. You'll see right here, their corners are up tight, playing tight man-to-man. Bush trying to get to the edge, tiptoes out of bounds at the 32, and there's a late flag that comes careening in at the 30-yard line. Michael Bush, a local product, went to Mayo High School here in Louisville. And a big part of what they do offensively. And Bush, uh, boy, Chris, at 250 pounds, they move him around a lot, too. Do a lot of different things with him offensively. Well, he likes to be called athlete. <laughs> if you call him running back, he doesn't like that. He says, I'm an athlete, and he showed it on that first play. 
Not many 250 pounders can go out wide, line up a wide receiver and run a crisp route. That's exactly what Michael Bush did. We have a penalty against Joshua Tinch, the wide receiver on the play. Sets up a third down and long now for Louisville. The nose of the ball resting back at the 31-yard line on this, their opening drive of the ball game. One of the things about uh, Coach Petrino's offense is he likes to throw underneath stuff and get the ball into his athlete's hand. They count on yards after catch. They really wanted to come in and improve on throwing the ball downfield. Here's their chance. Arudia and Jones in at receiver. On a blitz, Brom steps up, and it's incomplete intended for Montrell Jones, and they'll have to punt. Got some good pressure off the edge that time. Keith Ellison did a good job. I'll tell you, Oregon State did a nice job of coming with the blitz, but they played man-to-man -man coverage, Mark. That's the thing to keep an eye on, is the man-to-man -man coverage day and whether they can capitalize on it or not being Louisville. Todd Flannery now, number 36, standing on his own at 17-yard line for Louisville. Strotter back deep for Oregon State, calls for the fair catch at the 30-yard line. And that's where the Beavers will start off on their first offensive possession after that 39-yard punt. Matt Moore is the starting quarterback for Oregon State. Moore is a former transfer from UCLA, actually started for the Bruins as a true freshman a few seasons ago. He, too, like his counterpart, completing 70% of his passes coming into this ballgame. Matt Moore, 6'4", a junior from Valencia, California. And pretty good starting field position for Mike Riley's team. I think it's a perfect start right now for Oregon State, regardless of what they do here, for their defense to come out and set the tone with the three and out. Gives the offense confidence to see what they can do. Evanson Bernard is the lone back behind Moore. Moore's going to pass. He gets some heat, but completes the pass undaunted. Out to the 39-yard line. Pickup of about six on the play. Let's take a look at the skill players on the Nibia for men starting lineup. Bernard, Haynes, Hawkins, Wheat, Brown, and Haas, the leading receiver, second leading receiver in the nation coming in. Coates, Perry, Devin, Schooning, and Linehan up front on the offensive line for the Beavers. A seven-yard pickup on first down. Second and three. We'll see how they decide to cover Haas on defense. They certainly have to account for him or he'll pay. I mean, look what Coach Cassidy, the defensive coordinator, as the game progresses, what he'll do. There's Bernard on the toss, has the first down. Evanson Bernard out of Boca Raton, Florida, out to the 47-yard line in the first first down of the bar game. Let's take a look at the Nivea for Men defense now. Doomerville had an outstanding week against Kentucky two weeks ago. Stanley, Okoye, and Ripsey up front for Louisville. The linebackers led by Brown, Lamar Miles, and Brandon Johnson. And in the secondary, Council and Gay on the corners, Brandon Sharp and Antoine Sharp, a couple of brothers playing safety. First down and 10 for Oregon State at the 46-yard line after that seven-yard pickup. Just underway here at Papa John Stadium. This is the Beavers' first possession of the ballgame. Moore fires incomplete at the 47-yard line. The pass intended for Mike Hans. One of the big matchups, and we talked about Elvis Dummerville coming off a six-sack performance mark, and this is something that obviously concerns Oregon State. Now, they want to concentrate on their run game, but we have to watch the amount of pressure that Louisville will bring. They got some big guys in Stanley coming up the middle. They do have a potent pass rush against an offensive line proclaimed by Mike Riley to be better pass blockers than they are run blockers. Look at Dummerville there, and uh, not what you would call physically imposing. At six foot and just a little bit, depending on the shoes that he's wearing. Here's Bernard getting to the edge across midfield and down to the 46-yard line, about two yards shy of the first down. It'll be third down and short coming up for Oregon State. Doomerville right there is a pass rush mark, but he got knocked off the football. I was allowed to give him a, a, a short corner. You see Doomerville right there. They did a good job of sealing him inside. They got a hold of his shoulder a little bit, just enough to get Bernard to the short corner. Hey, Oregon State's happy with third and shorts. They'll take that all day. Single back formation, three wideouts on this third down and about three to go. Yeah, they jump, left tackle. And a little motion water. up front. You know, we see that so often that on third down and three and four, it's almost a given in college football that it's going to be a blitz. Right to the snap, ball start, number 61 on the offense. 
five yard penalty remains third down so what happens is everybody on the offensive line they're they're worried about getting beat around the corner on a speed rush especially when you got a guy like Dumerville coming off the corner so they want to get their set they got to hold their water and Dumerville had six sacks against Kentucky in their season opening victory there he is six feet 251 pounds a senior from Miami Florida Hawkins and Wheat Brown split to the top of your screen Third down and eight now after the penalty. Blitz coming off the edge. Who else? Hass, Mr. Clutch. A first down at the 39-yard line. And for more on Hass, let's go to Rob Stone. Well, here's a talent who in his senior year in high school in Oregon was the state player of the year, yet received all of zero scholarships. Huh? Not bad for a guy who is now a serious All-American candidate. That and Mel Kuyper Jr., draft expert ESPN, knows all about this guy. He said he reminds him a lot of Ricky Prohl. Great hands, skilled in route running, excellent body positioning, even flashed a little stiff arm. Mel said runs well at the Combine, has some good work at the All-Star Games. The former walk-on could be a first-day NFL draft pick. Yeah, Rob, Chris, it really underscores the point that scouting and recruiting is a bit of a crapshoot at times. Moore on a little play of eight, going up top, has a man. Almost intercepted, great help from the safety back there, number five, Antoine Sharp. One of the two Sharp brothers, Brandon being the other one from Jacksonville, Mark, Florida. You're right, Coach Cassidy was a little upset about the breakdowns and deep coverage. I'll tell you, Sharp right here does a good job of not biting up on any flame fake. Right here is the play fake. Moore does a good job of getting his depth, and he's beat over the top. But Antoine Sharp playing center field, going up to the highest point. Mike Cass actually does a good job of preventing the interception, going and knocking the arms away from Sharp. That's with that uh, Cheshire Cat grin there on the sidelines. Knew he almost had one. Weak Brown in motion. They toss it to Bernard to the wide side of the field. Has a few blockers out there. Evanson Bernard down to the 30-yard line, but a late flag coming in right at the spot of the tackle. Late flag like that, so you're holding, yep. They're going to bring this one back. We've seen Bernard a couple times now, Chris, on some runs in this ball game. And last year, Oregon State was dead last in the nation in rushings at just 70 yards per game on the ground, something they're looking to improve upon this season. Well, and that was the, the thing that they focused on in the whole offseason was their improvement in the running game. And what they're doing not right now is they're getting the edges. Holding, number three on the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, repeat second down. You know, that's something that you can live with because uh, a receiver holding that, 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 it wasn't a very good hold if it's a receiver <laughs> hold. But what they're doing is they're getting the edges, meaning they're outflanking Louisville's outside defensive players. And if you watch the receivers, Wee Brown right there took his guy and drove him out of the park. If they can run the football, that's encouraging for Oregon State. Looking for a little more balance offensively this year is back in the ballgame. Second and 18. They set up the screen. A good call against the pressure. Bernard again in the open field. And Evanston Bernard inside the 30. Close to a first down at the 29-yard line. Boy, good call there by Danny Langsdorf, the offensive coordinator. Well, second and 18, it should be an automatic screen call by everybody involved. And if you come through free like that, you've got to realize that something's amiss. You don't just get run by there. These guys are too good. And look at the lineman, athletic, getting downfield and throwing blocks. Uh, you're going to have a screen game if you have athletes like that that can get downfield and throw blocks. I'll tell you, Kyle Devin got down there and did a nice job. I see centers running down the field like that. They're going to measure for the first down, and they got it. Oregon State keeps its drive alive at Louisville's 29-yard line. Oregon State used to coming into tough positions like this, adverse circumstances, on the road. Nobody in the month of September, I think, plays a tougher schedule than Mike Riley's crew. They have Arizona State, who's in the top 25 after this. Louisville at number 11. They've already played Boise State last week. A close three-point win against them. First down and 10 from the 29-yard line. Pass is split to the bottom of your screen. Looking Hass's way. Got it. And a first and goal to go at the five-yard line. Hass beat Rod Council on the play. 24-yard pickup for one of the top men in America, a receiver that nobody knows about. Well, here's a nice skinny post right here by Hass. You see Randolph right there does has good position. It lets him inside and expecting safety help. The safety's there, but the safety's getting pushed from the inside. So he has two guys to cover deep. 
you can't not, you council can't let a clean release off the football like he did there. Ohio will make it pay. He'll make it pay all day. Oregon State threatening here, first and goal. Bernard on the handoff. Bernard hard running. Still no signal. They're going to mark it just shy of the end zone, just inches short. But Evanson Bernard lowered his hat and delivered a blow. Way well, Brown, you're, you're on a goal line, and you got a guy that's you know not overly huge. I mean, it's not Earl Campbell running it through there. It's a, it's a little guy, but look, a little guy with leverage and power and a little guy with pad level. The guy with pad level always wins. Appeared as if he may have gotten in, but they mark it that much short of the end zone. Remember, this conference game, we, not conference game, we do have instant replay. Moore keeps it himself. Touchdown. Matt Moore gets the Beavers on the board first. Great surge by the offensive line. We're talking about some big hogs up there in Okoye and Stanley for Louisville. They lost. They were late getting down and get set. Matt Moore came up and oftentimes some short yardage mark. You'll see a kind of a quick snap. Look at pad level wins. Nobody in the hole. They got a when you're that close, number one rule, take away quarterback sneak every time. First, they didn't waste, waste any time when they got to the line that no, no. time before snapping the ball. Cerna's extra point is good. And with 8.43 to go in the first period, Oregon State incredibly, inexorably impressive on their opening drive. Moore was the man. We'll be right back. Matt Moore engineering the uh, last score for Oregon State. 11 plays, 68 yards, a little under five minutes on the clock. And uh, Bernard was very instrumental running the ball on that scoring drive. He ran the ball four times, 62 yards. Kickoff is deep. And they'll start off on their own 20. Let's go back to the studio. All right, Mark, Washtenaw County Bowl, Eastern Michigan and Michigan. Those two schools about eight miles apart. Eastern punting to Steve Breston in the early going, and they cannot keep Mr. Breston contained. Steve Breston into the open field. We'll track him down before he scores. He just set up the Michigan offense right on the doorstep. Had problems against Notre Dame, but not with Max Martin. He's in there for the ailing Mike Hart. 7 0 Wolverine. Right, Reese, and uh, the obvious question is, where was all that against Notre Dame? Montrell Jones in motion, first down and 10, Louisville's second drive of the game. Out of the eye, it's the backup tailback, Smith in the ball game, bouncing it outside, and Smith has a first down to the 34. Colby Smith, who ran for an average of 6.3 yards on 12 carries a couple of weeks ago against Kentucky, looking impressive there, a pickup of 14. Well, in order for a running back to get going, he's going to have good lead block. And take a look at the fullback coming up. He'll lead Colby Smith right through the middle. You see right there is the kick-out lead block. And great vision by Colby Smith on the cutback. Keeps his legs turning. Corner drops his head on the tackle. Piscatelli comes and does a good job of cowboying him down. Jones and Tinch. The receiver split to the bottom of your screen. Rita, number seven, a tall target. They go his way. He makes the catch. At the 41-yard line, Mario Heredia, the redshirt freshman. Chris, we were looking at him prior to the game down in the field, an impressive-looking chassis on him. Yeah, he, he, uh, it's a big guy with a big target, a long wingspan. He runs a nice little outcut here. Good body control for a big guy, and a good throw by Brian Baum because he had to get it over. The outside linebacker was in pretty good coverage, but he's able to throw the ball high because of the tall target and the wingspan possessed by Mario. In the land of Derby winners, he is a thoroughbred. Second down and four. Jones is the receiver split to the top of your screen. And Michael Bush puts it up to the 42-yard line. Stopped up about a yard short of the first down. It'll be third down and short. Doggett making the stop on the play, the 6-1 sophomore. Michael Bush came to Louisville with aspirations of being a quarterback here for four years, but those plans changed the season ago. And he has adopted well. We'll tell you more about that in a bit. Third down and two. Bush is the deep back lining up out of the eye. Taylor, the fullback ahead of him. Bush tiptoed, and he was stopped up short of the first down in the 43. Anytime, Fourth down and short. Anytime you can get penetration as a defensive line, and create bodies, you're able to knock down the running back. You see right here, watch the penetration of the defensive line. They're all coming down nice and low. 
There's a pad level. See the pad level and the penetration? It's a stack of, a stack of behinds. You get a stack of behinds, you cut off holes and cut fat lanes for Michael Bush. Oregon State did a great job of playing short yardage defense simply by penetrating the line of scrimmage and changing the line of scrimmage. Fun now is Todd Flannery, his second punt of the day. Came into this game averaging just 35 per. Gets up a high spiral. A short punt bounces at the 30. And Strutter watches it bounce out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Louisville's offense sputtering. Not the case with the Beavers. Moore trying to give them some more when we come back. ESPN's College Football. Brought to you by Mitsubishi. Driven to thrills. And Nivea for men. More evolved skin care. Welcome back, everyone. Papa John Stadium sold out today. A crowd of over 46,000 on hand, and right now largely silent because of the efficiency of Oregon State's offense. And they're on the offense once again here. First down and 10 from their own 29 yard line. You'll see this clip to the top of your screen. Bernard is the lone back. He gets the call, and he fumbles it. He put it on the ground, and Louisville has it. The Cardinals get the first break of the day on the turnover at the opponent's 30-yard line. A lot of scrumming going on down there. Oh, they're going to give it back to Oregon State. My. At first indication, it appeared that Louisville had the ball. You see right here, they were in a quick trap. You see the guard pull around for the trap block. He's right there. But a good fill by linebacker Louisville. Might have been Bernard that actually uh, got the ball Lamar back. Miles. Lamar Miles came up there from his middle linebacker spot. Nobody came and got him. He put a great hit on it. But Bernard panic and gets the ball back. He don't want to be the one that turns it over for his team. A good job by Bernard of getting the football back. Second and nine. Hits him off the edge on Moore. Has time to throw, though. Oh, what a catch and incomplete. Almost had it there. And let's go back to Reese in the studio. All right, Jonesy in the Carrier Dome game going on over on ESPN2. Syracuse and Virginia. And the Orange marching early. Perry Patterson keeps it himself and dances in. And Syracuse taking a 7-0 lead. But the Cavaliers would answer. March the ball down the field. And also scoring on a third and goal play. Cedric Pierman. Second effort getting in. Tied at 7. Halfway through the first. All right, Reese back here, third and nine. Moore delivers complete. But it's short of the first down, completes to Dan Haynes, the 6'5 senior. And the Beavers will send in their punting team. It's a big stop for Louisville. They needed something to get some momentum change to get something going either offensively or defensively. That's something that they needed to get back in this football game. Now when they come back on the offensive side of the ball, assuming they have good transition of the football here, is they got to throw the ball down the field, Mark. You're getting press coverage. You got to start winging it down the field to loosen them up. All right in comes Sam Palescu, the senior. And they fake it. Bernard. He's close to the first down. It looks like he got it. He, they caught the Cardinals napping. Somebody hit the snooze bar, and Mike Riley said, let's go get him. That's well, a great call by Mike Riley. You're on the road. You have the momentum. You don't want to give the momentum up. And, and, and not the best delivery I've ever seen, uh -huh. but certainly effective. And Bernard knows what he'd do when he gets the football. Makes a nice thing. There's Bernard as a personal protector. He sneaks out to the flat. They realize they only have the three yards to get. They get a good lead block out there for Morgan State. Not a, not a great knockout shot, but an excellent lead block by Doggett to get him out of the way. Well, it may be early on the West Coast, but these guys are awake. The Beavers have traveled 2,500 miles. And for more on their journey and their trip, let's go downstairs to Rob Stone. Well, saying it's a big, big deal playing in a three-hour time zone change. Even bigger with this early start, Oregon State head coach Mike Riley put all of his players this week on East Coast time. 
it was pretty easy to do because none of the players or the students are in school yet. So they started the day 7 a.m. breakfast, 7.50 meetings, 9 a.m. local time practice to replicate today's schedule. Coach even hinted the body clock adjustments may affect play calling. Maybe what we just saw there is for a little natural caffeine to be infused in the game plan. <laughs> right, Rob. And like I said, they caught Louisville sleeping that time. Bernard getting to the edge. Bernard low in his hat. Up field. By number 35, Brandon Sharp out of Jacksonville, Florida at the 48-yard line. Chris, we've noticed that Oregon State moving a lot of men in motion, a lot of different formations, quote-unquote. Well, they are, and what they're doing is they're getting three on one side or a trips formation or tray, whatever the terminology you're using. And what happens is Louisville's getting there, but they're getting there late because of the great job of blocking by the wide receivers and tight ends for, for Oregon State. Keep an eye on Mike Hass. He's split to the bottom of your screen at receiver. Third down and three for Moore. With time, incomplete. And good coverage that time in the secondary. And now we have a late flag at midfield. So hold on a minute. We appear to be heading towards fourth down, but let's get the call from our official. Pass interference. Number 14 on the defense. All the place to the spot of the foul. First down. First down and 10 Beavers. The infraction against Rod Council. Well, that Council came over the back, and you'll probably see he hooked him with his right arm. He came with the long arm on the left, but you have to be able to do that. You see, pass is going to come right across here in the middle of the field. There he is. He's open. He's got his arm up, and there's the hook. You see the hook? He didn't have to hook. All he had to do was come around. He had great position. He's looking back at the ball. In fact, he almost could have came in and picked that off. Gave him the hook. Play fake to Bernard. That's a throw. Complete. Down to the 26-yard line, and the Oregon State offense continues to move. Hawkins on the catch. First and 10, a 20-yard pickup. I'm Mark Jones, along with Chris Spielman and Rob Stone, down to the field here at Papa John Stadium in Louisville, Kentucky. Oregon State out of the Pac-10, leading by a score of 7 to nothing. They took it down the field on the opening drive of the ball game. And now they are threatening again at Louisville's 25-yard line. Well, Matt, pretty balanced in their yeah. attack so far. And, that, and that, that's trouble for Louisville. When you're able to run and pass the football, it's trouble for any defense. Going up top for his tight end, had him open, and overshot Van Devere. Let's go to the studio and read. All right, Mark, this is a Taco Bell studio update. Michigan and Eastern Michigan. Eastern had another breakdown in the kicking game. They snapped a punt over the punter's head. Max Martin making the pay, going in 14-0 Wolverine. All right, Reese back here. It's going to be second and 10, 3.16 to go in the first quarter. And Matt Moore looking pretty impressive here, quarterback in the opening stages of the game. Six of 10. For a total of 89 yards. Yeah, he missed one there. Haynes got behind Abe Brown on a tight end seven route or tight end corner route. Beat the linebacker one-on-one -on -one coverage. Ninth play of the drive. They set up the screen to Bernard. Brought down immediately at the 26-yard line. That one read better than the previous screen that they ran. Brandon Johnson, number 97, one of the first to arrive from his weak linebacker spot. Yeah. Brandon Johnson's a tremendous athlete at 6'5", 225 pounds. Coach Mike Cassie told us he's the best athlete on the defense. They move him around and try to keep him on block. Time he did a good job of sniffing out the screen. I'm watching, though, as a sidelight, watching Council and Hass go at it. And Council's getting away with some tackling down there. I mean, he's holding Hass when they're matched up one-on-one. -on -one. Third and 11. Right here's Hass. Now he's got a linebacker over him. He's got to be able to jam him. They look the other way. Moore incomplete. Intended for Wheat Brown, and it's fourth and long. William Gay had a great break on the football, too. The good thing that ball was high because of the tremendous break and the angle taken by William Gay to Alexa, take away the throwing lane. Alexis Cerna right there. One of the great comeback stories in all of college football last year. Missed three extra points in their loss against LSU last year. And those letters are the letters of a cancer patient friend that he's made. Somebody that has been instrumental in him being able to overcome the adversity of a year ago. And he continues in his successful ways, knocking through the field goal from 43 yards out. And Oregon State leads by a score of 10 to nothing. Cerna, a Lou Groza candidate for the upcoming season. We'll be back to Papa John Stadium in Louisville after this. 
Welcome back, everyone, to Louisville, Kentucky, Oregon State, out of Corvallis, Oregon, leading 10 to nothing. Getting off to a very fortuitous beginning here. Alexis Cerna to kick off. Douglas will take a knee. Six yards deep. Let's go downstairs to Rob Stone. Well, Mark, things won't be getting any easier for the Cardinal offense today. Right over my left shoulder here, Broderick Clark, starting wide receiver. He has been out this entire game right now with a lower left knee sprain. Just spoke with head trainer Dwayne Trioli. He told me he is done for the day. Clark, one of the guys, Rob, that was expected to become a playmaker among the receivers. And Bobby Petrino looking for his receivers to pick up the intensity of their play from the Kentucky game a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, Clark got hurt on that opening kickoff return. Got bent funny. Brom under heat and sack back at the 13-yard line. Good push up front. Ben Seeger was the first one to get there. Ben Seeger. It starts off with a, a bad handle, a bad snap from the center. Watch Seeger right here. On the snap of the ball, he's see, oh, he, uh, on blocks. I mean, there was a miscommunication. And plus, the, the timing's thrown off with Ben Brum fumbling the snap. Bad snap. Seeger takes advantage of miscommunication and a bad block by Jason Spitz. Jason's got to get out of there. He opened the gate. Seeger went through it. Empty formation. Five receivers out for Louisville. Brum, little shuffle pass. First down and then some tinch. Out beyond the 30-yard line, Joshua Tinch with the biggest play of the game so far for the Cardinals' offense. Well, they, they had the perfect play on for man-to-man -man defense. It's a little shuffle pass to Tinch. Why is the perfect play against man-to-man -man defense? First of all, they seal the corner, and the defensive backs are all running with the wide receivers while the wide receivers are blocking them because their responsibility is that man. They're not able to react to the run as quickly as they like. Thus, you have a big game on a good call by Bobby Petrino against that tight defense. Finch reaching a milestone with his 100th career reception. Carnage in motion. Brom back to pass. Got him. Has a man wide open. First down at the 19-yard line, Harry Douglas. Oh, i tell you. He went to the old make a turn at the fire hydrant. Then go up to the Chevy. In other words, he did an out and up. There's the, there's the out, and there's the up. They rolled the pocket to buy him extra protection. A great throw by Brian Brom. A little late getting there. Douglas has to slow down. But a little late getting there. Heron had to slow. Heron, Heron jumped the out cut. He, he went to the fire hydrant. He's got to go back to the Chevy. That's deep. Ten yards more down the field. That pass doesn't hang up there. That's six points. Out of the backfield. Bush has a hit of steam. And the B train is rolling, Reese Davis. Louisville first to goal. And so are the fellas with the winged helmets, perhaps trying to get some of that sick feeling in their stomachs out from the Notre Dame game last week. Michigan and Eastern Michigan. Chad Henney, Jason Avant, 21 0. They're not yet through the first quarter. Boy, Michigan making a statement early in that game. Back here, first and goal after that 11 yard pickup by Michael Bush. Inch in motion. Ron hands it off to Bush. Bush got down to the four-yard line for Louisville. It'll be second down and goal. Last week, Bush ran for 128 yards against Kentucky, most of those coming in the first half. As I mentioned, the offense uh, seemed to have sputtered a little bit in the second half against Kentucky. Alvin Smith making the stop. And Brian Brom, the latest in a long line of Brom family members, to play at Louisville. It started with his father, Oscar, back in 1968. This is the land of lineage where bloodlines count. Barnage in motion. Brom with a play fake. What a catch by Barnage! Touchdown! Again, a nice call by Coach Petrino. Great execution by Brom with the play fake. Hiding the football, giving a hand, taking it away. Barnish with a one-hand grab. And does not quit and runs through a tackler to get into the end zone. 
two seconds to go in the first period. And Louisville now cutting the lead to three points. And Brian Brom really sold that fake. It's something that he talked to Rob and you and me about yesterday. Great ball handling on this play. He sticks that ball out there with two hands. Brings it back in. Great timing. Almost threw it too high. But Barnish does a great job. See, Barnish is in there blocking down and sneaking out. He sneaks out, goes up with one hand and gets it. And this is impressive. Low on the shoulder and getting over into the end zone. That's what he needs. He need that's his first touchdown pass of the year. And for more on Brom, let's go downstairs to Rob. Yeah, that's a wrinkle of Brom's game that we wanted to keep an eye on today. It's his ball fakes. Last year, it was more of a one-hand approach. This year, it's the two-hand style that Coach wants. He's really trying to sell it a la the master, Peyton Manning, who he spent a lot of tape watching during this offseason. But, Chris, you know, how do these different ball fakes alter a defensive attack? Right there. See, if you see the ball and you show the ball, that gets a defensive that's watching the ball carrier. That gets your eyes on the ball carrier because you see the ball as opposed to an empty hand. If an empty hand's out there, you don't get fooled. But that, that is one of the most, I think, uh, underappreciated skills that a quarterback has. And you said, Mark, the master paid many. There's a reason why Indianapolis Colts offense is so su successful. One, they can run the ball. Two, Peyton Manning makes everything look the same. And if you can fake with the ball two hands, it keeps the defense on their, on their heels and guessing. A heck of a catch by Barnage. To Barnum. Barnum and Bailey, a circus grab that time, and the kick now coming down at the eight yard line. Strutter still on his feet across the 25 to the 27 yard line. Well, tonight on ESPN, two of the top ACC teams meet Bobby Bounds, Florida State crew, goes to Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts to take on Boston College. College football primetime presented by Polaroid on ESPN tonight at 7.45 Eastern. Florida State Boston College also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator or satellite provider today. This is BC's first game in the ACC after a highly documented and acrimonious split from the Big East. First down and 10 for Oregon State. Let's see if they can answer. Pass is split to the bottom of your screen. Moore sacked back at the 20-yard line and brought down hard. Octavia Stanley and Elvis Doomerville there. Their eighth sack of the season. You know, there are players that wonder what happened and players that make things happen. He's the guy that makes things happen. Yeah, well, they get it because Sharp comes in on the blitz right here. You'll see Sharp coming on the blitz. At least Doomerville one-on-one. See ball, get ball. Get a sack, Elvis. Welcome back, everyone, to Louisville, Kentucky, Papa John Stadium. And during the last commercial break, honoring the men's basketball team here at Louisville and head coach Rick Pitino, Taekwon Dean there, one of the top three-point shooters in the nation. Team that last year went very far in the tournament. All the way to the final four. First down and ten for Oregon State, actually second and 17. Pass in motion. A sack and a fumble. Cardinal ball. Yeah, well, you know, Elvis has not left the building. In fact, it looks like he's gonna stay a while. Look, when you're down, you need a spark. You come to your big time player right here is Big Elvis Doomball. He's going to beat him with speed around the corner. The simple speed rush. First of all, he gets off on the ball. He gets that left arm under. He's got great leverage because he's only six foot tall. And the great thing about it is he doesn't go for the kill shot. What's he going for? He goes for that football. You see that right hand coming club of football? That's a technician. That's speed. That's leverage. And that's a pass rush. And that is a six foot man with the wingspan. The player six foot eight, and he used that to his advantage. We got great get off on the football. Great get off. First down and ten. The 15 yard line. Brom to pass. Complete at the seven yard line to Uruda. Arudia makes the catch. Talk about that big imposing target at six six. Easy to pick him out of a crowd. It'll be second down. Just a young redshirt freshman, but a wealth of receivers down here for Brian Brom to choose from. He'll, 
He'll spread that football around. You know, as much as Louisville slings it around, you go back and scout them a season ago, and it shows that they actually ran the ball a little bit more than they passed it, 51 to 49 percent. Rudia and Tinch at the top of the screen. Brom's going to run it. And he got collared, maybe face mask back at the eight. Keith Ellison, the first to arrive defensively for the Beavers. And Sir Henry. Sir Henry might have got a little bit of the face mask. Sir Henry's a big fellow that can move, and that big Paul gets out there and gets that mask. That'll jar the neck. One more look See, at sir, it. He, no, no, that's unintentional, but he's got to get let his hand go. But he's going to try to make a tackle. Anderson, nine months ago, actually became academically ineligible, lost his scholarship, went to a junior college, had to take four classes, got a B in all of them, and back on the field, a native of Oakland, California, one of the real stars in the middle. First down and goal. Rudy has flipped at the top of your screen. Monage in motion, the handoff is to Bush. A nice surge right there by the defense to stop Bush at about the two-yard line. It'll be second down and goal for Louisville. Yeah, talking to Michael Bush yesterday, one of the things he needs to improve on, as he said, he still needs to be a little bit better in learning how to become a running back. And one thing that I can tell right away that he needs improvement on, Mark, is his vision. He doesn't have great vision, and when he goes and hits the hole, he hits the hole a little bit hesitant because he's not sure where the hole's going to open up. The more rips he gets, the, the better he'll get with the more reps. He has the talent. Came to Louisville as a high school All-American. Pushes the lone back. He gets the call again. Over the left side. Touchdown! Now that's what I like to see Michael Bush do. His third rushing touchdown of the season. 16th of his career. Uh, he should be no more. He's a one mover. One move and use 250 and run people over. That's his job. And that's what he did. And good results happen. He scores for the cards. Just underway here in the second period. And Carmody in for the extra point, which is good. And Louisville, after trailing 10 to nothing, has stormed back to take a four point lead behind Michael Bush. Doing the honors the last time. Mike Riley, the head coach of the Beavers, said. To win this game, we're going to have to stay out of the bushes. Couldn't do it that time. We'll be back. Back at Papa John Stadium during the break. Recognizing Otis Wilson, former great here at the University of Louisville, member of the Chicago Bears Super Bowl championship team in 1986 with the Bears. Had a great career here at Louisville. And Athletic Director Tom George and Wilson out on the field and he might be honoring some players on this Louisville team before it's all said and done. Brian Brom leading the way, Michael Bush looking impressive, but even more so Elvis Dumerville defensively wreaking havoc against Oregon State. This is Sammy Strutter. Took a hit, made it out to the 19-yard line. Take a look at our Napa game track. Oregon State started off quickly. Asked with a couple of big catches on the opening scoring drive. The first time that they touched the ball in the, in the game. And then Doomerville with a sack, a fumble recovery, which led to the last score by Michael Bush. Just keep an eye and see if there's any adjustments that the Beavers make, Chris, on that offensive line. First and ten. Good game between the tackles out near the 25-yard line. Evanson Bernard with the carry and Walker actually that time. Jim Tavis Walker, the transfer from the University of Florida, giving Bernard a little bit of a break. But Chris, what can they do, the Beavers, on the offensive line to account for Doomerville better? What they just did right there is run the football. That'll slow a pass rush down. The other thing to look for when they're in passing mode to help the offensive tackle, a lot of times they'll take a running back and chip the outside shoulder of the outside rusher. Doomerville's getting a break right now. He'll be back in there on a, on a passing down, I promise you that. Play 
think. It's caught by somebody. We just haven't had a signal yet whether it's an interception or not. Well, we can rule it a catch. Wheat Brown got in there to make the catch. Yeah, you, the other thing, Mark, and rarely does a defensive player turn the tide of the game like Elvis Doomerville does. But what it also does is it inspires his other guys to start getting pressure on the quarterback. And Matt Moore, who was making great decisions and had time to throw the football, right now is getting a little hesitant. He doesn't like it. He's got to throw that in the stands or in the dirt. Wheat Brown does a nice job of preventing the interception and making the catch. Brendan Johnson with a pressure that time. Pass is split to the top of your screen. Third down and five for Oregon State. Complete for the first down of the 34 to Haynes, the tight end. And let's go back to the studio. All right, Mark, Virginia and Syracuse is going on on ESPN2. Virginia on the move, deep in Syracuse territory. Mark is taken. Oh, batted around, and Ryan LaCasse. Ryan LaCasse from his defensive end position dropping in coverage, snuffing out the drive. They're tied at seven, and Michigan has tied a Wolverine record with 28 first quarter points. They're all over the fellas from Ipsy. Right, recent back here, it's Anthony Brown in motion. That's Walker. Running it into the boundary, under 11 minutes to go in the first half, and Doomerville not in on the tackle, which is a bit of a change, a departure of the recent trend. Doomerville just tied the Division 1A record for sacks in two consecutive games with eight. Who held the record previously? They didn't give out the answer at our production meeting. This morning. Oh, that one. Right there, Walker, if he, if he would have got a block from Wheat Brown, they had a big game. That's the, what, what Oregon State needs is to be able to have the receivers block down the field for big games on the running game. Flag down. Wheat Brown underneath. And the first down across midfield, but this might be a motion or procedure penalty against Oregon State. That is one of the problems with doing a bunch of different formations and have different motions is sometimes guys do get confused. And that's that'll drive the coach batty because that's a mental error. He, he no mental errors. Playing a good team. You don't want any mentors to help him out. Number three on the offense. Five yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat second down. Oregon State coming out of Corvallis. Coming off a win against Boise State last week. Because of the time change, they altered their schedule. Rob Stone told you about that a few moments ago. Mike Riley held morning practices, sessions beginning at 9 a.m. But they do have the advantage of not being in school yet. They start school on the 26th of September. Second and 12. Four. Throws it away in the direction of Wheat Brown, but Brandon Johnson once again providing pressure. And Chris, they told us that they put him in positions to make some plays, and that's not a good sign as Doomerville is down on the ground, supine, well, seemingly shaken up. Uh, you know, we talked about what adjustments Oregon State needs to do. One of the adjustments they don't need to do is put a running back one-on-one -on -one with a big fella. And I think what happened, to be honest with you, Elvis hit the running back and ran over him so fast that he landed awkwardly. I mean, the running back got a speeding ticket going to the ground. He ran over him so fast. Let's take and one watch more the, look. Watch the big fella right here. He's going to come off the corner. And again, he's got great get-off. See his get-off? And there, he just takes the running back and, 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 and runs him over so fast that he comes down awkwardly. And, you know, Walker does a good job of getting in the way. You know, but he... he but Doomerville's too strong, and when he, he puts his hands in his chest, I don't look like he came down on his hip funny. See, he's grabbing his hip right there. Doomerville uh, wears number 58 in honor of the late Derek Thomas, who played with the Kansas City Chiefs, also a native of Miami. And, boy, he certainly rushes the quarterback like the late Derek Thomas used yeah. to. Let's answer our Aflac trivia question. Elvis Doomerville just tied the... Division one record for sacks in two consecutive games with eight. Who held it previously? Any guesses, partner? I'm going to say Cornelius Bennett. Oh, Pat Swilling. Pat Swilling. Former teammate. Yeah. He never told you about it in the locker room? A couple times. <laughs> 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 
That's one way to slow him down, put it back on him, and have him run over him so fast that he hurts himself. Third down and 12. Boomerville on the sideline to see what kind of rush the cards get. Wheat Brown makes the catch, but short of the first down at the 38-yard line. It'll be fourth down and about five to go. We're here at Papa John Stadium, Louisville, Kentucky. It's sold out, folks, over 46,000 on hand. Louisville ranked number 11 in the country, leading by a score of 14 to 10. I'm Mark Jones along with Chris Spielman, Rob Stone down to the field, one of the stars of the game so far, Elvis Doomerville. Louisville, meanwhile, in the big picture, coming into this game, still entertaining hopes of a big role this season. The expectations in Louisville higher than they've ever been as they enter the Big East Conference. Jones, there's a flag down, and Jones is brought down to the 30-yard line, a 47-yard punt, a 15-yard return by Montrell Jones of the Cardinals. This is one of the games that Louisville has had circled on its calendar. This one, along with the West Virginia game, Cardinal Nation thinking about perhaps a date in the Orange Bowl. It's a great punt by Paul Leskew. Timeout down in the field and when ESPN's College Football brought to you by Garnier Fructiques for hair that shines with all its strength. And Gillette introducing Tag Body Spray for Guys. Consider yourself warm. Well, the history of great Louisville quarterbacks hardly limited to the Brom family, the most famous high tops in football belonging to Johnny Unitas, Louisville class of 1954, to snatch you outside of Poppy John Stadium to commemorate his wonderful, productive career here at Louisville. First down and 10 for the Cards. 9.37 to go in the first half. They have a four-point lead. Brian Brom, the latest in the line of Brom's at quarterback for Louisville. Going up top. Great catch by Oridia. Yeah, that, that might even cross over to Web, Web Gem nominee. First of all, they motioned the trips. They got one on one with Oridia, and they know Oregon State's going to play one one on one, man to man. You see the size difference. Watch him go up with one hand. He got it with his left hand. That's a great catch. Bobby Petrino, Chris, may have found. A new playmaker among his receiving core. Yeah, he's got the size. He's a weapon at that size. Great hands. That's his third catch today for a total of 45 yards. They run the reverse this time. Nothing happened, though. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. All right, Jonesy, Texas A&M taking on SMU. The Mustangs, they had themselves an iron skillet after beating TCU in that trophy game, but they do not have proper punt protection. Perhaps someone should have hit somebody with an iron skillet. Amos Gumbly blocked it. Jackson Appel scored. Aggies up by a touch. All right, <laughs> Back here at second down and eight. Almost completed the last seven passes in a row. Is Smith. Well, Smith has a little bit of giddy up in his gallery. Cross midfield brought down to the 49 yard line. A first down for the Cardinals. Doggett made the stop on the play. A pickup of nine, though, by Smith. Yeah, you're going to see Brian Brown right here. Look, there's the two hands. He comes off the one hand handoff. That's what the ball pick, ball handling he's been working on. And Colby Smith does a good job of hitting it up in there. You know, you don't need a lot of moves. One move burst through the hole. But it was a nice misdirection play because Brom. Ran to Smith as opposed to Smith coming to Brom on the draw. Now Louisville with both Smith and Bush in the backfield. A great change of tempo approach. Rudy has put to the top of your screen. He comes back the other way, Brom does, incomplete at the 45 intended for 10. ABC's college football featuring the following regional action today. Miami taking on number 20. Clemson, the Canes trying to bounce back. And then other regional action as Oklahoma, UCLA, San Diego State against number nine, Ohio State. And Pittsburgh taking on Nebraska. Pittsburgh off to a shaky start under new head coach Dave Wonstadt. Second down and 10 just across midfield for Louisville. Tinch and Arudia split to the top of your screen. Douglas to the bottom. 
Brom with time. Rudia with another catch and another first down for the Cardinals at the 38. Well, he's just too big right there for Lawson. Lawson doesn't have bad position, and again, he doesn't get a jam on him on the line of scrimmage. And you see the big body just boxing him out and getting in front of him. But when you have that kind of size, Mark, it's very difficult for Lawson to stick with him. Not only size, but speed. It's like me posting you up. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Rudy and Douglas. Then you woke up. <laughs> First down and ten. delivers another strike near the first down marker to Douglas this time. Let's go back to Reese in the studio again. All right, Mark, and we check in now on West Virginia and Maryland. You know the Terps have owned West Virginia since the fridge has been there, 4-1 and one all time. But Jason Gwaltney goes in for the touchdown. West Virginia won this game last year, and they've got an early lead in the Snake Pit of Bird Stadium. And Cedric Pierman has scored for the second time today. Virginia on top of Syracuse in that ACC Big East matchup. All right, Reese, first and 10 for Louisville from the 27-yard line. Braun has him in. Incomplete. Intended for Montrell Jones, who laid out on the play. Well, this is what, what we expected Louisville to do, was to go up over top because of the tight man-to-man -man coverage. Braun throws a great ball, only where he can get it. Jones does his best to hold on to it, but when he hit the ground, it knocked it out. It's a good throw, though. Yep. Right on, right on time. And what they've done, they put Brom into the shotgun to let him see the field. That's what shotgun does. It lets him see the field, survey where he wants to go, and he's going on time and on target. On second down and ten. Smith on the handoff down to the 22-yard line. And let's get back to Brian Brom. His dad, Oscar, played here at Louisville. In 1968, his brother Greg was a wide receiver from 1989 to 92, and now the director of football operations on the staff. Uh, it's an incredible family tree that the Browns have that have really taken root here in Louisville. And Jeff was a quarterback from 90 to 93, did some time in the NFL as well. And Brian now says that he likes the spotlight. He welcomes the pressure that comes along with being a member of the great Brom family name in Louisville football. Third down and six. His brother's the quarterback coach. His coach. Maybe brother over the middle to Tinch complete. And defense. It's very difficult to stop. Brian Brom says that he knows that there's a lot of pressure on this Louisville team this year. The expectation's extremely high. People talking about perhaps even running the table. New York Times picking them to play for the national championship, but he welcomes the spotlight. Michael Bush is the lone back. Bush. And Michael Bush moves the pile down to the six-yard line. Got a nice block on the play from Eric Wood, the center. You know, one of the things you want to see Michael Bush do is, is see, when he made the cut there, the one thing he had to do was he had to chop his feet and stutter a little bit as opposed to planting and going. And that will come. The more he keeps working, the better he's going to get. But he, he's starting to put his head down and run people over. He's not a finesse guy. I understand that, you know, you got 250 pounds on you, use it. A long, methodical drive by the Cardinals again. Like that. Push straight ahead. Like that. Hammer time. Touchdown. That's the difference, Mark. That train horn you hear is Michael Bush coming down Bobby Petrino's tracks. This is the Louisville Cardinal offense that the Cardinal Nation had been expecting a couple of weeks ago that really didn't emerge in their minds against Kentucky, their in-state rival. The extra point good by Arthur Carmody, and it's 21 to 10. Bush came here as a prodigy, was first offered a scholarship when he was 16. We'll be back after this. Louisville now with 21 consecutive unanswered points. They take a 21-10 lead, 5-16 to go in the first half. The first two drives, unproductive. The last three, they have cashed in at the bank. Oregon State, meanwhile, 
with Matt Moore and Haas, their receiver, looking to get on track. It has been a different story in the second period for them. They've been unable to get anything going offensively, largely in part because of the pass rush. Let's take one look at the touchdown run by Bush. Let's take a look at my guys here, Spitz, Quarterman, and Wood right here. Watch these three guys, and watch how they open a hole for Michael Bush. The center's going to come out and get a nice job on the linebacker. The linebacker moves lateral instead up in the line of scrimmage. Bush is able to hit that hole with his shoulder square down the field, running full speed. Not a lot of moves. He's a power back, and they're trying to get him to utilize his power. He wants to utilize his power. There he did. It was a great job from the center and two guards of opening up the hole, paving the path for Michael. There's a look at Elvis Dumerville still on the sidelines. Top pass rusher in the nation on the sidelines right now. He's shaken up a couple of series ago. Quick toss to the sideline. And Chris Spielman, I know you love how guys wrap up that way. Good tackle that time by Sharp. Let's go downstairs to Rob. Well, guys, Elvis is back in the house, as you saw, a lower back problem. Stretched it, rotated on the sidelines. He's fine. But one guy to keep an eye out for right now, starting middle linebacker Lamar Miles, number 22. Left knee. Testing his agility, flexibility there. They put a kind of a, a modified lateral knee brace on that knee during that last break, helping support the outside of that left knee. Keep an eyeball on him. All right, Rob. Second down and eight. Weak Brown in motion for the Beaver. Incomplete at the 43-yard line, intended for Josh Hawkins. It'll be third down and long for the Beavers. Now, well, I like what Oregon State did. They brought the tight end Haynes over, put him on Doomerville, and they also let Bernard come and double team. And when they did that, they were able to have time for more to throw. But the one thing that does, when you take a tight end and a running back and have to have him account for the best passer, best pass rusher, what's that do? It takes those two guys out of the passing game. Fewer choices than uh, yep. offensively. Third down and eight. This is where you can really pin your ear back and come. Pass is matched up against William Gay at the bottom of your screen. More sack. Montavious Stanley. Cardinal defense staunch and suffocating right yeah, now. Yeah, watch with Tavius Stanley, the big fella, hits him with a uh, slap rip, and beats the center one-on-one. -on -one. When you're 320 pounds, you can move like that, turned his shoulders, got skinny through the gap, and was able to finish. He's well, a good Stan football player. Yeah, he's a criminal justice major, and he brought a little law and order to the football field on that play. Fourth down and 16. Valescu into punt. Ten pockets and line drive back at the 50. And it's a seven yard return. Let's go back to the studio and race. All right, Mark, coming up on the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report, Lou Holtz and Mark May will join me. We'll talk about the big blue bounce back, and Michigan did it in record-tying fashion. Also checking on the game in the Carrier Dome between Syracuse and Virginia, a freshman stepping forward for the Cavaliers. And the Game Day Gang checking in from Chestnut Hill as they get ready for Florida State and Boston College tonight. And I'll tell you how impressive this Michigan offense was this week. Where was it last week? We'll never know. Michigan, Mark. Lou, you looking forward to halftime? Absolutely. Lou will have more to say at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. <laughs> All right, Reese. Didn't sleep on those guys back in the studio. Have a shaken up player down in the field. That's Cohen, who is the deep snapper for Oregon State. And an interesting situation has really arisen with Cohen, the deep snapper, and his understudy, Derek Bruns. Cohen had a couple of errant snaps last week, actually cost them a field goal, but he got the call once again in this game. His backup, Bruns, was actually dismissed from the team last year, was not asked to come back. Got married recently, and uh, Rob, I think he's got about, what, 18 jobs besides football? <laughs> well, you know what, Mark, a few weeks ago, you might have been asking uh, Bruns for uh, cash back on a deposit. You know, last year, he was their long snapper. He was basically told his services were no longer needed after last season. So he's been working as a part-time teller at U.S. Bank there in Oregon. 
since getting married a few months back, he's been working three jobs to pay his tuition, a couple bad snaps, and he is back. Now if he can just get some more paid vacation time, he'd be all set. Never too late to try and get that scholarship, Rob. Bush and Smith in the backfield, and this is Bush getting to the corner. Great balance. Michael Bush with a first down in the 21-yard line. Ellison finally making the tackle. A 22-yard pickup, and Chris, he's looking a little bit more aggressive now, isn't he? Yeah, it, it is, and, it, and it's, he's realizing, it, and he's turning in a running back right before our very eyes. You see right there, Oregon State's coming on a blitz with Gray up the middle. There's a one-step and cut, and that's great balance, as you said, Mark, for a man that's 250 pounds. you got to hit him, though. You can't tackle him on his shoelaces. He won't go down. Told me that he weighed about 250. I said, "How long you been 250?" He said, oh, "About four years." Get the feeling <laughs> he's always been big. Now they split him out wide, going into the end zone. Touchdown, Arudia! What they did. They, they, they came, we'll see if he's in bounds. They came back to the same play that they just missed with Don Jones earlier. They motion the trips, they isolate the receiver one on one on the back side. He hits it, his right foot hits the cone that is part of the field. He's in, in bounds with a great catch. But again, the height advantage, Boston. Remember, He's out there at 5'11", 6 foot. He has no chance on a 6'6 guy. Just want to remind everybody that we do have instant replay in effect in this game. We have a technical advisor up in the booth. This much along the lines of the Big Ten's replay system a season ago. So they're going to go and review this one. One more look at Arudia. Did he stay in bounds? There's the ball. Now, I believe... And this is where the technical virus, I believe the cone is part of the field. His left foot is in. His left foot to me looks like it's in before the right foot hits the cone. There's the catch, and there's the left foot, which is inbounds. There must be irrefutable video evidence to overturn the call. Remember, for it to be a touchdown, the ball just has to cross the plane. There's the left foot, the ball's in the plane. I think it's touchdown. I don't think that's irrefutable. One more look at it. There's the catch. See the height advantage? And, and he can get up in the air. There's the left foot down. That's touchdown. Well, one thing's really emerging is that Noridia is really becoming a playmaker for Louisville. Buddy Ward is our replay advisor in the booth. And he is looking at pretty much the same replays that we are and you are at home. Yeah, we're batting a thousand on these so far this year. That's a good part about it, huh? But the left foot was definitely down. And even if they did rule him out, the ball should be on the, the half yard line. Not, not an incomplete pass because one foot was certainly in bounds. After review, the call on the field stands. Yep. Touchdown. Meridia credited with the touchdown from Brian Braun. Meridia now with five catches for a total of 79 yards and a touchdown to go along with it. Louisville storming back with 27 consecutive points after falling behind 10 to nothing. This is a very combustible offense. Mario Meridia. Extending himself. That's Iridia Jr. I wonder what Senior looks like. We'll be back after this. 12 and 7, the winning numbers. Get yourself a Louisville lottery ticket tonight. 28-10. And look at the turnaround offensively for the Cardinals. The first two possessions resulting in punts. The next four consecutive touchdowns. They have taken a 28-10 lead with 3-0-1 to go here in the first half of play. This is a non-conference game between the Big East and the Pac-10. And Louisville is pretty much carrying the banner for the Big East Conference this year. Coming into this game ranked number 11 in the country. Harmony with the kick. Strutter. There's a flag down. 
And Strutter is collared at the 35-yard line. And another flag. That late one might have been a face mask. We've got a block in the back, then a face mask. Well, just, to, just to go back to that touchdown one second, that's the same play that they ran with Jones. They'll motion the trips. They isolate the defensive back, lost in one-on-one, -on -one, and they throw the fade. This time it worked with Gridia because he's 6'6", and, and it's not a difficult throw when you have a 6 inch advantage, and you saw how the catch was made where he was up over the top. His hands was over the top of the defensive back's head, and he just goes up and gets the ball. And he, he's starting to come of age now. He's a redshirt freshman, young player right here in Louisville. Local product, a former high school basketball player. I wonder if Rick Patino's down there on the sidelines whispering in his ears yeah. a little bit, huh? Our two penalties during the return, the only go block in the back on the return team, will be a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. After the play was over, personal foul, face mask on the kicking team, it will then be a 15-yard penalty. First Oregon State and Mike Riley in a net five out of the two penalties in the ESPN College Football Encyclopedia. Biggest reference guide ever published on the history of college football. Chris, mine actually came FedEx a couple of days ago, just in case you were wondering. You can read about the profiles, records, stat leaders, fight song lyrics from all 119 Division I programs, box scores from every major bowl ever played, vote breakdowns for every Heisman race, a complete list of every year's consensus All-Americans and more. Available now wherever books are sold. First down and 10. Beavers with the ball at their own 32. They have been shut out since the opening first part of the game. Moore bounces one in Hass's direction incomplete. Stops the clock with 2.47 to go in the first half. As I mentioned, things really have turned around since the first two drives. Ten points, and then they've been shut out since with only 13 yards of total offense to show. And one of the things Louisville's done a nice job is they've taken Hass out of the ball game. They've done it with good coverage, but more importantly, they've done it with a superb pass rush. Second down and ten. Moore under heat again. Bounces another one to Hass again. Montavious Stanley in on the pressure. And you know, it's not a good thing after play when you see all five offensive linemen from Oregon State looking back and see if it was my guy that hit the quarterback because there was a train ruck between Stanley and Doomerville back at Matt Moore. Both and guys shaking up. Doomerville was shaken up a couple of series ago, came back into the ball game, and now that's uh, Montavia Stanley writhing in pain down on the ground. Those are two guys you don't want to lose, obviously. Here's Montavious coming in. Doomerville, it's a nice little stunt. It's an X game. It's a me game. Doomerville goes first, then Montavious comes around. And, and, and you see Montavious, top of his helmet, hits Doomerville right in the gut. And I wonder if he's got a neck problem. That's what I'm concerned about, because anytime you get in that, that head in that position where the crown or the top of the helmet hits the head, that's of concern. But you see his legs moving a little bit, which is obviously a good sign. But he, he, Doomerville took a shot. That's 320 into the gut. Wow. Interesting that the two of them yesterday were sitting down. Hope that Stanley is able to continue. But right now we're going to take a break and go back to Reese Davis in the studio. All right, Mark, Texas A&M and SMU. It's a 7-6 game in Reggie McNeil. You know he can pass, and Reggie's showing off the running ability, too. Reggie McNeil, 63 yards, and the Aggies early in the second quarter with a 14-6 lead over the Mustangs. All right, Reese, and uh, back here, Stanley. Still waiting to get up under his own power, hopefully. Yeah, they're doing strength tests with his arms. Yeah. Got to make sure he's okay. And he's got to go through some tests before they let him in because of the nature of the hit. There's a look at Doomerville, his teammate, who actually appeared to have taken the worst of it. Well, hey, they run a great stunt right here. You see Doomerville goes first inside. Montavious comes around, and the big fellow's closing with speed and, and hit Doomerville right in the, in the gut. You got you to have abs of steel to be able to take a shot from uh, 
Big Stanley. And Stanley was actually teasing Doomerville about his height yesterday when we were talking to him, saying that he might be six feet, depending on the shoes he's wearing. Third down and ten for the Beavers. Under siege right now on that pass rush by the Cardinals. Almost intercepted three different times by three different players. Wow. Sharp had a chance. His brother, Brandon Sharp, had an opportunity. Neither could squeeze it. Right there. See, Johnson has the chance. Sharp comes in and has a chance. We proud knocks it out. And William Gay had the wow. last opportunity at it. It's three shots. You don't get many of those opportunities. But another great job by Louisville's defense. A little change up, too. They only brought three and dropped eight. Nowhere to throw. Those and they block it. They came after it and blocked the punt. The Cardinals special team comes alive. First and 10 Louisville from Oregon State 28. Well, there's 6'5", Brandon Johnson. Again, one of the better athletes on the Louisville defense. He's coming inside and gets his long arm. Great effort of getting the left hand down and not up, taking the punt off the foot. See, Brandon Johnson coming in. Great effort of getting that. Oh. Big left ball on there. Tireless effort, Chris. Remember, don't forget Oregon State had a loose, loose uh, new long snapper in there. So we don't know the time of the snap. Maybe the time was slow. And when your pump protections, it's tenths of a second to count. First and ten for Brom. Not wasting any time. Wide open. Ten for six. Yeah, the Oregon State's defense right now is dazed and confused because after the ball was thrown, linebackers are pointing to defensive backs, defensive backs are pointing to linebackers. They don't know what's going on. Brian Brom is making them pay. In a big way, Chris Fielding. Tinch with his first touchdown catch of the season, the seventh of his career. And it was set up by Brandon Johnson's block punt. Last week he made a big play against Kentucky with the Kentucky team driving to tie the score. He forced a fumble, recovered the loose ball to squelch the potential tie, which would have sent it into overtime. His big punt block set up the Tinch touchdown catch. Well, you're going to see Tinch right here inside. He's going to come down, run it out, then up. Take a look. There's the out by Tinch coming up the middle. And the middle linebacker has to take him. The safety's occupied, and you can't vacate the middle of the field of the number three wide receiver. The number three wide receiver, that's the guy furthest most inside, runs down the middle of the field. The middle linebacker has to vacate his zone and run with him the best he can to hopefully get safety help. But Oregon State, Mark, has to go into the locker room at halftime, and they have to say to themselves, we can't play man against these guys. We have no chance of stopping them. We've got to be able to, if we're going to blitz, we've got to do it with a zone blitz, not a man pressure, because athletically, they're getting beat all over the field. Well, that was one of the big questions that begged coming into the ball game. How would Tinch measure up against that secondary of Lewis and Lawson, or rather, how would Lewis and Lawson measure up against the potent passing and catching attack of Louisville? All right, you see the Louisville defense and Johnson, they're, they're dancing in one blood. They want to keep going. for Oregon State. A little indecision. Now you got to bring it out. 20. Brom already with a career-high afternoon of 223 yards passing, three touchdown passes. Last year's Conference USA Freshman of the Year getting a breather right now after tossing his last touchdown pass. But this year, looking for the same kind of success as his Tinch in a new conference, the Big East. 2.21 to go in the first half, and Oregon State and Mike, Matt Moore, pardon me, have really taken a punch to the jaw. How do they react from here? First and 10 from the 20. Bernard with the handoff out to the 24 yard line. Second down at about four to go. Oregon State. 
Things don't get much easier for them after this game. They play Arizona State next week, albeit at home. I don't think a team in the country has played as tough a schedule in the month of September over the last two years than Oregon State. Under two minutes to play here in the first half. You're looking at number 58, Elvis Dumerville, who defensively has been the impact player of the game so far. Second down and six. Weak Brown in motion for the Beavers. With a quick hitch to Haas, who breaks a couple of tackles and has the first down out to the 39-yard line. Let's go down to Rob. Mark, quick update on the status of Montavious Stanley. They have an ice bag on the back of his neck. He is obviously out for the rest of this half. They're going to take him into the locker room. They're calling it a neck strain, and they're going to x-ray him at halftime. All right. Uh, they could really use him in there. He and Doomerville have really had a huge impact on that front, winning the battle of the trenches for Louisville. Well, that's what Oregon State needs to do, Mark. What they did last time is go to a little bit more of a three-step drop. That neutralizes the strong pass rush that Louisville's been bringing for most of the ball game. They place the ball on the 39-yard line and have an issue with the chains on the sidelines. Talked about Oregon State potentially going to some quick game stuff offensively to turn the tide, but that doesn't seem to have worked. What next? Well, I mean, they, they, they've got to go to a three-step drop. The other thing they have to do is they have to start changing up the snap count, and he has to get rid of the football. They're having trouble matching up, handling the pass pressure from Mike Cassidy and his defense. And, and rarely do you see, Mark, a defensive player take over a game like Doomerville has, but Doomerville owned this first half. Doomerville had six sacks a couple of weeks ago against Kentucky, already has two in this game. Setting the NCAA record. This is Bernard getting to the edge. Cuts it back up and across the 45. Evanson Bernard brought down by Doomerville downfield. So if Doomerville isn't making tackles behind the line of scrimmage, Chris, he's doing it downfield. Well, he's one of those undersized guys, Mark, and I'm telling you what, he's one of those hybrids between a linebacker and a defensive end at six foot, 250 pounds. He'd be a great outside linebacker in a 34 defense because he's athletic enough to cover pass. But the thing I like, the, the, his biggest advantage is one is leverage. People say, well, he's only six foot. Well, that's that's a plus because he gets under those big offensive linemen. And two, he has a superb, made the best that I've seen this year, probably for the rest of the year, get off. Talked about how successful he was a couple of weeks ago in their season opener in Lexington against Kentucky. Had six sacks in that game, which they just found out the sports information office today that tied and set actually a NCAA record. Doomerville was six and then two today. He talked about as a youngster being able to go watch Syracuse play and Dwight Freeney, who he's kind of built similarly to, isn't he? Yeah, I think Freeney's uh, maybe just a little bit bigger, but again, I don't, I don't get caught up in that height issue because I do believe for a guy with his quickness and strength and leverage, the depth plays, uh, it's an advantage for him. Plus, don't forget, he has that long wingspan. Out of Jackson High in Miami, Florida, Second down and four. Weak Brown in motion. They toss it into the boundary. Bernard has the first down across midfield. Evanson Bernard out of Boca Raton, Florida. Mike Riley has a couple of players out of the Sunshine State on his roster. Bernard one of them. Here's what they're doing. They're going to no huddle. Now they got room to work. They got a 120 on the clock. After a shaky start, uh, Louisville bouncing back. Bernard has run the ball 11 times for 46 yards. Going to bring out the chains and measure. He's actually that much short of the first down. It'll be third down and that much to go. Bernard has about uh, 15 friends that made the trip up to watch both he and his former high school teammate Sabi Piscatelli also from Boca Raton uh, to watch this game said his father couldn't make the trip his father uh, is Evan Bernard that's how he got his name Evan son <laughs> he's Evan's son so thus uh, Evanson Bernard at 92 yards last week rushing right now uh, you'd think that they got a Look for some big strikes, though, down 25 points. Now, this is smart by Oregon State lining up, so when the clock runs, they're able to get one off. Back to the 40s once again. 1.13 to go in the half. 
Three receiver formation. Hass split to the bottom of your screen. Flag down. There's going to be a motion penalty against Oregon State. It's not totally surprising. Again, when you're getting a pressure like Louisville's bringing, the big fellas up front get nervous and they want to make sure they get out and get in their pass sets as quick as possible. Illegal snap. Number 67 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. And even the center gets jerky with the ball. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, Reese and the crew in the studio with the Pontiac Halftime Report, a busy Saturday afternoon in college football. Big games, a big game at the big house. Uh, and some others. That's the sixth penalty against Oregon State for 39 yards. First down and 15 now. The ball resting on their side of midfield. Officials squaring away something down on the field. They're going to reset the clock. Reset the game clock to one minute, ten seconds. Oregon State with the ball. Beavers went seven and five last year overall. Played in the Inside.com Bowl and defeated Notre Dame five and three in conference play. Uh, looking to get a little bit of momentum. Going into the game against Arizona State, that's going to be ruled an incomplete pass. It'll be second down and 15 now with 101 to go in the half. You know, what, what Coach Cassidy, defensive coordinator for Louisville, is doing, he's creating matchup problems for Oregon State because he's putting Brandon Johnson, the 6'5 athletic linebacker, and Doomerville lined up one-on-one. -on -one. And that creates a matchup problem athletically for Oregon State. There's Coach Cassidy, he's got his glasses on. Looks like the professor up there. Got the right formula defensively so far for the Beavers. Moore throws it up. Incomplete. Intended for Josh Hawkins. And Rod Council was there on the coverage. It'll be third down and long now for the Beavers. Well, Oregon State is totally out of sync. And, and, and you're getting Matt Moore out of his comfort zone. He's not very comfortable running and rolling out and throwing the football. He's more of get the ball, set his feet, and wing it. He can run, but when he's on the run, not a good throw. That time his shoulders didn't get square, shoulders stay turned, under through the football. First year starter, replacing Derek Anderson. His dad, Don, played Major League Baseball for the St. Louis Cardinals. Reed Brown, Hawkins, and Hass, the three receivers out on this play on third and 15. Underneath to Bernard, and Bernard is hollered at the 45-yard line, short of the first down. It'll be fourth down coming up. Matt Sanders right there making the stop for the Cardinal defense. The clock running with 35 seconds now to go in the second half. In comes the punt team. Sam Palescu had one blocked on his last punt attempt. Remember, it was Brandon Johnson that got in there and made a big impact play. Remember, Oregon State has a new long snapper in the ball game. I'd come after it. You have nothing to lose, only 11 seconds. He tries to get it to land inside the 10, but it goes into the end zone, 45 yards and all. That's the end of the first half of play. 35 to 10, Louisville leading. It's a game of sacks for Doomerville. And Reese Davis, I want to know, is he sacking the quarterbacks with paper or plastic? You tell me. Paper, plastic, anything else. He, he's, he's going to run out of all kinds of supplies. Go ahead with us in the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. And Mark, I think the worst sign for the Oregon State offensive line is that the toughest shot that Elvis Doomerville took in the first half was when he ran into Montavious Stanley, his teammate. And I'll tell you what, the quarterback for Oregon State, Matt Moore, he should take his offensive lineman in the locker room and smack them around because he's not getting any help. He's going to be sore after the game. He's going to have to sit in a nice tub after a game. When three rushers can get to your quarterback with six blockers, the offensive line's not getting the job done. But the Louisville defensive front, magnificent. Well, it just shows you what a good quarterback like Matt Moore can be made to look like he's mediocre with just dialed any protection. He don't have any. You can't throw from a supine position. Yeah. <laughs> hard. You're on your back. It's hard to see him. 
You know, if you think Louisville's going to call off the dogs, remember the big lead they had against Kentucky and Petrino took some heat and put some heat on himself for being conservative in the second half? He might try to go get them if they can. We continue here on the Pontiac Thursday night when the winner gets $5,000 donated to the General Scholarship Fund, courtesy of Pontiac. A little contribution from Lou Holtz now to perhaps Oregon State and Mike Riley down 35-10 at the half. Lou, I know you've been in situations like that. What do you say to a team in a situation like Oregon State's in? Well, first of all, you have to get your protection straight, et cetera. But I tell you, you must give them an idea they can win. You break it down. We're down by 25, men. Defense, you have set up a touchdown. Kicking game, you have set up a touchdown. Offense, you have to score two touchdowns. We do that, shut them out the second half, we win the football game. you got to break it down where they feel it's realistic. Coach, were you that mild-mannered when you said it just like that? Well, and screaming and hollering isn't going to help at that time. You do that Monday. <laughs> got to do that during practice. Well, you do a big oh, time Monday. Oh, Mike Riley might be screaming a little. <laughs> All right, race uh, back here at Papa John Stadium, Louisville, Kentucky. A daunting task ahead for Oregon State, down 25 points. As we get started here in the third quarter, the Beavers will receive the opening kick of the half and start off on offense behind quarterback Matt Moore. Louisville started off this game down 10 to nothing, has stormed back subsequently with 35 straight points. Yeah, it almost seemed like Oregon State ticked them off starting off 10 nothing, but that's what a team that wants to compete for a national championship needs to do. If you get body blow, body blow, you better come back with some overhand rights or you're going to get knocked out. Looks like uh, they spent a little extra time on their stools in the corner at halftime. Uh, we kind of noticed a little bit of the body language of the Beaver players coming out. Uh, didn't really seem to have much giddy up, but looks can sometimes be a little bit deceiving. That's one guy they need to get back involved in the offense, either getting the ball in his hands out of the backfield, throwing or running. They did have some success, especially early on in the first quarter with Bernard to keep that pass rush slowed down a little bit from the Cardinals. He will kick off. Six yards deep. It's Heron. And Oregon State will start off on its own 20-yard line. Time for our Napa game track. Well, Oregon State scored on its first two series of the ball game, but then the defense started to exert itself for the Cardinals. And then the big block punt by Brandon Johnson led to this touchdown catch by Iridium. And that's where we stand, 35 to 10. First down and 10 from the 20 for Oregon State. Handed off to Bernard. And Bernard turns up field. And we see a late flag thrown back to the 24-yard line as Bernard goes down just shy of the 35. And just when it seems like Things are going well for Oregon State. Uh, that's kind of symbolic of what happens. They blow a tire. Uh, the, and a silly penalty because Bernard had the corner and it looked like they held behind the football. Once the ball passes you, let Wolverine, it go. Number 83 on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Well, at times last week against Boise State, Oregon State trailed Boise State. We're able to come back and win 30-27 to 27 in the dying seconds of the game, Chris. But, Quint, uh, but this is, Chris, a different animal in Louisville. Well, what well, is? It's an animal that has a, a tremendous pass rush. And what does Oregon State like to do? They threw it 25 times in the game. Uh, they started out throwing well, but unsuccessfully, they got hurt in the, in, in the end of the first half by the tremendous pressure. And they keep running in waves of guys in Louisville and keep bringing fresh bodies for that offensive line. They can't keep up. First and 14. Looking for the screen. Bernard sneaks out. Evanson Bernard has the first down in the 33-yard line. Well executed play by the Beavers. Well, it's a great job of Evanson Bernard getting away from the tackle of Council. And uh, something that, again, that I point out every week on our telecast is a lack of wrapping up. And you'll see Council come in and he will not wrap his arms allowing Evanson Bernard to get the first down. Bernard has been noted as one of the real pleasant surprises for head coach Mike Riley. Stealing and winning that starting job over Walker and Wright. 
He gets the call again. Bernard cuts it back up inside and falls forward to the line of scrimmage at the 33-yard line. Let's take one more look at the difference in Oregon State offensively after the first two drives. They had 122 yards. Since then, just 46. And Louisville countering with 35 unanswered points. Yeah, you, I, I mean, Louisville really got into, they showed a mix of things. Empty backs, eye backs, shotgun. Oregon State couldn't adjust either offensively or defensively. Pass complete. Number 87, Jason Vanders. Tight end out of the backfield. Let's go downstairs to Rob. Mark spoke with Oregon State head coach Mike Riley just before a kickoff in the second half. He said, hey, this opening drive is huge, Rob. We really need to kind of start to get that momentum back. A couple things he said to look for. They're going to start running the counter a little bit more. And they need to buy Matt Moore some more time, obviously, the defensive line of UL. Getting a lot of problems. Look for him to roll out a little bit more today. All right, Robin, we'll see if uh, that makes any difference in what they can get offensively. Third down and eight. Wheat, Brown, and Haas split to the bottom of your screen. That's Wheat, Brown, in motion. Moore, sack, back at the 20-yard line, and a loose ball. Louisville ball. Now, big Elvis. Elvis coming back in, and I'll tell you what they do, Mark. They go, in honor of Otis Wilson, they go to the old 46 defense on this alignment, the old Bear defense, and, and Doomerville's inside over a guard. Right here is Doomerville. See, that's the 46. When you have three defensive linemen, Lined up and covering up the guard, center guard. Doomerville just beats him with speed. Never quit. Relentless. That's the second cause fumble. And again, effort. Effort to run to the football. There's Doomerville. Look at it. Laying out. He's, he's on pace to have 60 for the year. Ridiculous stats so far by Elvis Doomerville. Gives Louisville a great starting field position. Out of the backfield. It's Bush. Gets those shoulders square. And here comes the beat train. A flag down. Tucked down. But will it stand? I think you're going to get to Jason Spitz. It's going to be against the Cardinals, so the touchdown will be taken off the board. Now this is what I'm talking about, blocking behind the play. You can block a guy legally in the back if you just body block him and Illegal not use your hands. Number 59 on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. See right here on the screen, this is well set up by Michael Bush. There's a good block by Quarterman getting out, getting that leg wet right here. Now watch right here and see if he hits him in the back. See, just, just, oh, he, got, he did. That's a good call by the official. And if all he would have did, if he would have threw up his hands and kind of belly bumped him, they're never going to call it. See, watch right, right there's the hands. Now he didn't have to block because Bush had him beat. Ray uh, overran the play. It's just being smart. I'm out of the shotgun this time. Intercepted. Lamar Harris takes it out to the 20-yard line, squelching the potential scoring drive. Lamar Heron with the big turnover for Oregon State. So they get it right back after losing it onto the fumble, and Heron is a little shaken up. Yeah, Heron did a good job. They played a little bit of a spy coverage. Holding his plate, James Bond. You didn't see me? I'll take it. Louisville leading 35 to 10, albeit they threw an interception a few moments ago before our commercial break. First and 10, Oregon State from their own 20-yard line. Moore has time for one of the few times and completes the pass to Mike Haas. Let's take a look at that interception a few moments ago thrown by Braun. Well, it's a nice job of Heron playing in spy coverage. Louisville finally gets help. You see Heron just kind of floating in the middle. Braun never sees him. Steps right in in front of the football. Now watch Braun. Quarterbacks are taught to keep your head on a swivel. If you're a defender, you'll get one of these right in the chops. Mm. Alvin Smith with the layout. He says, if I can't get you on a pass rush, I'll get you on an interception return, but I'm going to get you. He got him. Mike Riley said that the first drive of the third quarter was going to be important. They turned it over, but they got it back on the next play. See what they do with it here. That's Jim Tavis Walker, the backup tailback. Walker out of Statesboro, Georgia. A transfer from the University of Florida. Stanley back in the ballgame, and good news for Louisville fans is that 
X-rays on his neck during halftime proved to be negative. That's one thing you never want to screw around with is the neck. He, and he's a potent weapon. Mark. He, he's as good as they get as far as being a defensive tackle. Not only does he make plays, but he's one of those space eater guys. Picks up two, three guys. Doomerville on the sidelines, rewriting the NCAA record book during the course of the afternoon. And Moore keeps it himself. Prior to the snap, ball start, number 92 on the offense, five-yard penalty. We've seen that, Chris, three or four different times by Oregon State today. Yeah, again, and it's all it's all caused because of the pressure and the get off of the defensive lineman because the offensive line wants to make sure they get off, and they know that Louisville does a great job of when the ball snaps, they're humming. So they get too anxious. Now, Doomerville has set an NCAA D1A record with nine sacks in the first two games for him. And the meter's still running with 11.20 to go in the third period. Oregon State just three of 10 on third down today. Moore, and it's incomplete at the 32-yard line. Good coverage on the play by A. Brown. Bernard couldn't squeeze it. Yeah, and Doomerville almost had number 10. He forced a high throw. Again, he, he's taking over the game. You see Doomerville right here. See, he gets his hands, and he has a nice little rip, and his leverage allows him to force the overthrow. But he's got great leverage and great shoulder turn to give that offensive line a small target. He never gives him his chest. you got to make an adjustment. you got to chip him back on him. Oregon State has had long snapper issues. This one comes back with to Paulescu, and he gets off a nice high spiral punt. The 26. Jones nailed about the three-yard line, a 49-yard punt by Paulescu. Brown threw an interception on the last series. Let's see how he answers on this upcoming one. Football, brought to you by Dockers, men, women, home, dress to live, and KFC's new flavor station. Be the boss. Choose your sauce at KFC. Well, since 1984, Louisville Slugger has been synonymous with Major League Baseball manufacturing 1,500 bats per day, folks, over a million each year, and best of all, anyone can get the very own personalized bat yeah. to take on. Look at that. Oh. Got a swing for the fences right now. If you're Oregon State, though, with a big bat, you probably need like a 36 ouncer right now. Yeah, that, that or start using it to help pass block. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, take put a new mini in the chop block. I, that, that might be the only way to slow down this tremendous pressure put on by the Louisville front. Brian Brom and Michael Bush and the new playmaker in Mario Aridia have arrived today. This is Bush. And a flag down. Fumble. As Bush goes down in a fumble as well. This is one of the problems Louisville held, had last week was they came out against Kentucky. They were up big. Started the second half slow. And Orms ended up losing the game two weeks ago. That's something Coach Petrino wanted to attack this week in our meetings yesterday. Looks like it's going to go against the Here offense. Here we go, chop block. Number 78 on the offense. 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat first down. Well, Chris, uh, carry a big stick and uh, speak <laughs> softly or something like that. Nice. There's, a, there's a lot going on with, uh, with Louisville this year, not only in the Big East, conference-wise, but nationally. Some publications have them picked to play in the national championship game. What are your thoughts on what you've seen so well, far? I, I think they're talented enough. First, they have a quarterback. They have a tremendous defense, and, they, and the way they get pressure, they have a one-two punch running back with Bush and Colby Smith, an array of wide receivers. They can keep it going. They're certainly capable of running the Big East, going undefeated, and getting in the national championship game. This is Bush bouncing it outside. Nice cut by Michael Bush. Going to be light on his feet, makes it back down to the 23-yard line, and there are big things happening here at Louisville, signifying its productivity and uh, a new age, a new era, a new practice facility being uh, built just near here, Papa John Stadium, just adjacent to Papa John Stadium. 
due to be completed December the 1st. Tom George, the athletic director, paying us a visit at halftime and saying that they gave him the keys, hoping to break ground, actually uh, open the doors to it. Plus an expansion. Yep. Pass complete. Aridia dragging defenders to midfield. A 27-yard gain and a first down. Yeah, well, Bobby Petrino was telling us that they're looking for a playmaker, and, and Brian Brown has found a playmaker. He's found a comfort-level receiver and a big one at that. And Uridia, the thing I like about his run after catch, see his strength, he's just pushing Lawson around, comes in, catches the ball with his hands, good transition, back into the run, then carrying Beavers on his back. Not only is he a member of our all-airport team, looks great in the airport, but man, he is productive to back it up. A little counter, this is Smith. A gaping hole. And Smith with another first down at the 33-yard line. Let's go to Reese in the studio. All right, Mark, Beavers look like they're on their way to the bus. Not so much for the Mustangs at SMU. They're hanging in against Texas A&M, but Reggie McNeil with the Aggies drops this beautifully thrown ball right on Chad Schrader. 24-8, just about to start the second half. All right, Reese. SMU uh, beat TCU after TCU beat Oklahoma. How do you figure that? that that's that conference. Hey, Mark, I, I do want to bring up a point about Michael Bush. Here's Brown back to pass again first. Has a man wide open. Touchdown, Douglas. His first career touchdown reception. And the route continues in earnest for Louisville. Now up 32 points. 32 unanswered points. Pardon me, 42 unanswered. If, if you're going to play man-to-man -man coverage, you better get some technique and stay inside. Or a, a skilled receiver like Douglas will make you play. Rob, there's another one. Well, this is what the Cardinal Nation came to see. They came to see their offense show like they did a season ago. Brom leading the way this time. Not Stephon LaFleur. He's thrown a touchdown on three of his last six passes. But this was an offense that last year averaged almost 50 points a game, in addition to almost 540 yards per game. Both led the nation. Harmony with the kickoff. Heron at the eight. Our Heron. Got by the kicker. And Heron with a nice kickoff return out to the 37-yard line, deep into Louisville territory. We're here at Papa John Stadium, Louisville, Kentucky. It's the Big East against the Pac-10. And right now, it's all Big East. Louisville leading Oregon State 42 to 10. I'm Mark Jones, along with Chris Bielman and Rob Stone. And what can Oregon State do from here on in? That's what you have to wonder. Matt Moore in a quarterback. He's gone the entire way. They started off on with a touchdown and a field goal on their first two offensive series. Since then, they have been shut out, shut out and shut down. Pardon me. And the guy that uh, Louisville is taking away from the game is Mike Cass, too. Remember, an all second leading receiver in the country last year, all Pac-10, has been a non-factor. Play fake. Pass is complete at the 27-yard line. Has last year caught passes for over 1,300 yards. He's the leading returning receiver in Division I football. 86 passes for 1,379 yards. And the interesting thing about uh, Coach Riley, now Coach Riley obviously the former coach of the San Diego Chargers, and we talked to him, he, he, he mentioned the fact that, hey, he didn't know if he was ready for that head coaching job. He, he told me before the game, he wished he was an assistant first before he came a head coach. He enjoys working the college game. Bernard put it on the ground. 
And they got it back. And let's go back to Reese in the studio. Reese, who needs this Louisville slugger bat? <laughs> well, you know what? Sometimes you don't need a bat. You just need some speed. Michael Johnson of Virginia, he has some. This is a guy who's battled injuries for the Cavaliers. They always try to find a way to get him involved. Seems to be pretty involved against Syracuse. A 70-yard run. Virginia on top of the Cues. 24-14, late third. All right, Reese back here at second down and 12 after the fumble. Passes put to the bottom of your screen. Hawkins to the top. Moore sacked by Montavious Stanley. Stanley and Doomerville have been a veritable wrecking crew up front for Louisville. Well, you have problems when you're, you're creating pressure from the outside and the inside because you have nowhere. You can't step out because you're Doomerville coming from the outside. You can't step up because you have the big fella, Stanley, coming from the inside. And again, they're just too overpowering right there. He's one-on-one -on -one with the center. He gets pad level and just bull rushes him back stuck there in that pocket. He's got to move around knowing that the pressure that these guys is, are, are bringing is, is unrelenting. Stanley's second sack, Chris, of the day, third of the season. Open underneath, it's Bernard. And Bernard got back to the 27-yard line, short of the first down by about 10 yards. Talking to the big fella, Stanley, yesterday, and he plays a, a very difficult position, Mark. It's a one technique or the three technique. But in order for a defense to be successful, you have to have an unselfish great player like Stanley that's willing to take on the double teams, that's willing to push the pocket. That's what he does. He knows his role on this football team, and he does a great job of executing his role. Let's just turn on, meanwhile, the place kicker attempting a field goal. This one from... We call this about 46 yards out. Cerna knocks it through. Alexa Cerna, good. He's two for two today. And for more on the place kicker, let's go downstairs to Rob. Mark, earlier in the game, you alluded to that whole LSU debacle last year. Well, after that game, Cerner received a letter from 12-year-old Austin Pierce, who told him to keep his head up and keep fighting. Let me tell you, Pierce knows more than you would ever want to know about fighting. He's undergone radiation treatments, two hip replacement surgeries, all due to bone cancer in his left hip. The letter and subsequent conversations by phone and email helped Cerna gain perspective on life and a new focus on the field. Now, you know, some say he's the best kicker in the Pac-10, and when he puts that ball on the tee coming up here in a second, he'll be getting two thumbs up from Austin Pierce. Literally, he has an A and a P written on his thumbs, and Austin's health permitting, these two will finally meet face-to-face -face October 1st when Oregon State hosts Washington State. Yeah, Rob, a great story, and basically Pierce wrote him a letter and said, you know, I have some bad days too, but you have to keep going, you have to keep fighting, and that's what Cerna did, finishing last season 17 of 20 on field goals after missing those three extra points, and it was really the focus of a lot of media attention as the ESPN cameras caught him sobbing uncontrollably, plaintively, on the locker room floor after the game. And Mike Riley sat him the next game and then brought him back the game after that and went on to have a very successful season. This is Douglas back at the four. Douglas on the fly out to the 39-yard line. Well, tonight on ESPN2, the top ACC teams meet. Bobby Bowden in Florida State. Take on Tom O'Brien in Boston College, ranked number 17 in the country. Boston College with their first game in their brand-new league. College football prime time presented by Polaroid on ESPN tonight at 7.45 Eastern. Florida State, Boston College also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator or satellite provider today. And uh, interesting to see how that battle in the trenches will play out. Boston College's offensive line averages over 317 pounds. All five starters returning. First down and 10 for Louisville from the 36. Brom was looking to get rid of it on the quick drop. Instead, his drop back at the 29. Seeger got there. He's looking for Urita out there on the sideline. I'll tell you, Urita, Urita, I think, had a misread because he had press coverage. He hitched it up. When you have press coverage, you're man-to-man -man on a three-step drop. If that defensive back is up in your face, then you run the takeoff, and he had a beat for the takeoff. But that's youth. That will come. Iridia. 
split to the top of your screen. There he is, number seven. He has a touchdown catch already today. This time, though, they hand it off to Michael Bush. And Bush delivers the blow at the 37. It'll be third down. Coming up for Louisville. Talking to Bobby Petrino yesterday, head coach of Louisville, about Michael Bush and his role as playing quarterback. He actually had to bring his father in. They had to sit down and said, look, Michael's a tailback now. And that was a little bit of adjustment. But Coach Petrino says that his quarterback growth was stunned a little bit because he had trouble taking the ball from, from the center. Yeah. In high school, they worked uh, primarily out of the shotgun. And it's a big difference in how you see the field and how you take snaps. Played offense and defense in high school at Mayo High School here in Louisville. Third down and long. Brom flushed out. Now Brom's going to turn into a tailback. And he makes it out to the 43-yard line, about five short of the first down. He got a good block from Colby Smith. But they'll have to punch. Yeah, there might be a decision as, as Brom gets older where he'll take what he can get, and he sees three guys closing on him to go ahead and take a knee. That's something when you're up 42 to 13. I don't know if you want a guy that's closing in on 300 yards, your number one quarterback, and trying to run over three guys. But that's all right. That shows toughness. Uh, Brom actually thought about going to University of Tennessee. It came down to Tennessee and Louisville. He said he looked at the talent on both respective teams and said, you know what, Louisville is right there, and I'm right at home here playing where my brothers and father used to play. He's right about the talent. Strutter. There's a flag down. And Strutter pushed out of bounds at the 23, and another flag thrown at the 30. I'm counting about three different flags down on the field. Well, Oregon State is probably the only Division I football team that actually has a special teams coordinator that specifically and only coaches special teams, and frankly, they're not getting a job done on special teams. They didn't get it done last week, and they're certainly not getting it done today. Block punt, penalties all During over the place. Return, there were two legal blocks in the back. Number nine is declined. Number 33 is accepted. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First out. Well, we talked about Brian Brom in his successful high school career, as we did about Michael Bush's. They played against each other. Bush at Mayo High School, and Brom right there at Trinity High School. And they talked about the great battle they had the one season, I think it was 55 to 50. Michael Bush running, playing quarterback. Brom playing just at quarterback. And Bush talked about the fact that he'd lead his team down the field on a quick drive, and <laughs> Brom's team would come back and score in one play. <laughs> then Bush had to turn around and play defense. <laughs> he mentioned the score was 55 to 50 one year. Brom's team winning. First down and 10. Handed off up the middle. Johnson in on the stop. Michael Bush having a pretty auspicious afternoon. 57 yards on the ground, averaging a little over five per. Yeah. Along with a couple of touchdown passes, yeah, uh, the, catches, uh, the, runs. Don't look at the total yards there. Look at the average per, as you mentioned, Mark. That's that's a winning percentage. You can get five yards a pop to be very productive at the running back position. Don't forget, he shares a lot of carries with Colby Smith. Second down and eight. Intercepted. Johnson. Touchdown. in a nutshell sums up the day for Oregon State and Louisville respectively. See Rick, right there is Brandon Johnson and just dropping back into his zone coverage on a deflection. It looked like Walker to me had a little bit of an alligator arm. He saw Brandon Johnson closing in. Didn't go up with two hands. Tipped it with one. Brandon Johnson focused. The big athlete. Block punt. Tackles all over the place. By the way, let me top it off with an interception return for a touchdown. You know, it's interesting, Chris. As impressive as Brom and the offense have been today, I think you'd have to have to give equal credit to the defense of Louisville today. Well, I think you give credit to the, the defense for turning this ball game around when they were down 10-0 in Doomerville and company. 
came in and started saying, enough's enough, boys. we got to go get the quarterback. They did. And when you get pressure on a quarterback now, that's, that, I give them credit. That was a tough catch to make, but go up with two hands. But you start getting poor throws that normally the quarterback of Matt Moore's capability does not make. And that's a poor throw. And Brandon Johnson capitalized. A senior out of Birmingham, Alabama. Coach Petrino says that Brandon's very talkative. Said he'd talk to a wall if the wall would talk back. <laughs> Very loquacious, and uh, like we said, they put him in a lot of positions to make plays. He certainly made one there. You don't find an athlete, Mark, that is as big as Brandon Johnson, and they do a lot of things with him. They blitz him. They put him on special teams. They drop him in coverage. He runs people down. He's really a good football player. 49 to 13 for Louisville. They actually trailed at this point, folks, if you're just joining us. They were down 10 to nothing after the first two drives of the ball game by the Beavers. Strada. What a hit at the 16-yard line. And Reese, they are bringing the wood. I'm not talking about Louisville. <laughs> They're putting a beat down on the mark for sure. This is Georgia and Louisiana Monroe. This is going to wind up in very similar fashion, I believe. Oh, keep your eye on the camera, man. We lost D.J. Shockley, so too did Louisiana Monroe's defense. Shockley runs for one, he's thrown for another one. Dogs are cruising 17, nothing at the half there. And show your gold. Look at Vandy. They're going to be 3 0 for the first time since 1956 if they can hang on. They're beating up Ole Miss 24 3. All right, Reese, and first and 10. Matt Moore has it batted down at the line of scrimmage. With 3.18 to go in the third quarter. Shot Roberts getting in there, recognizing three-step drop and getting his hands up on the pass rush. And this is also an opportunity for Coach Petrino and Coach Cassidy to get some experience for some of the younger guys. You're seeing new bodies in there. This was one of the big tests that Louisville would face when they looked at their schedule a couple of months ago. So that they were preparing for Oregon State going back to February. Moore fires complete. For the first down at the 29-yard line, Vandiver. The ESPN College Football Encyclopedia, folks, is the biggest reference guide ever published on the history of college football. You can read about profiles, records, and statistical leaders and fight lyrics of all the different schools, all 119 of the box scores, every major bowl game ever played, vote breakdowns for Heisman Trophy races, and All-Americans and a lot more, now available wherever books are sold. First down and 10 for Oregon State. Moore, under duress, throws it away. And there's a flag down at the 30. Zach Anderson with the pressure, meanwhile, for Louisville. Boy, everybody's getting a shot at, at the quarterback today. Yeah, along with Lamar Miles. And it's just the different fronts that Louisville's presenting. Oregon State, they cannot pick up any blitz formation. Thus, they have Matt Moore running all over the place because of the confusion on the blocking schemes during the passing game. There is no penalty on the play. The ball did not cross the line of scrimmage in the field of play. They called intent or uh, illegal man downfield. Ball didn't cross the field. The ball didn't go downfield. No illegal man. Sets up a second down and 10 now for Oregon State. Oregon State next week plays Arizona State at home. There will be no getting up at 7.30 to start practice like they did this week to account for the time change here on the East Coast. More fires incomplete. Hey, Reese Davis, which one of those teams? Does a Virginia need this 36-ounce bat I'm holding here? Well, it's uh, both of them are slugging it out against each other. 24-14 game, Mark, when Perry Patterson of Syracuse in those new unis goes in for the second time on the afternoon. Game's over on ESPN2, and it's a tight one right now. 24-21. Syracuse making a charge. I like those throwback uniforms. Yeah. Looking for Jim Brown and Zonka to start carrying the ball. <laughs> Floyd Little. <laughs> Third down and ten. Moore. 
Oh, nice pass complete to midfield. Who else but Haas? As a first down in Louisville Cardinal territory at the 47-yard line. Haas coming into this ball game, folks. Picks up 23 there. Had a streak of six consecutive games with over 100 yards receiving. You see what they're doing. They're trying to get him and disrupt the timing on the line of scrimmage. But Haas, being the veteran that he is, keeps working back to his quarterback. And one of the strengths of Mike Haas is his ability to run after the catch. And on film, and even today, you rarely see the first guy get him down. He always has this knack for making the first guy miss. The second leading receiver in the nation coming into this ball game. And remember, folks, coming out of high school, he was the state high school player of the year in Oregon. No Division I team offered him a scholarship. Mike Riley, the head coach of Oregon State, said that when he took over from Dennis Erickson, that he didn't even know who Hass was. He didn't really stand out in his eyes. But he eventually did come to stand out. Well, we asked Coach Riley, and he would know because he was the head coach of the San Diego Chargers at one time. He said, Coach, is, is Mike Hass a legitimate pro receiver? He says, there's going to be scouts coming through, coaches coming through, that when you look at him, talk about the all-airport team, he's not on your all-airport <laughs> team. But when you get him in the camp, and when you watch him run, and when you watch him run routes, and he has a better speed than people think he has, uh, and, and you watch his hands and his ability to run after a catch, he's going to be one of those guys, Mark, that goes into training camp, and he's going to do the same thing he did at Oregon State. He's going to go in unassuming, and by the time the season starts, he's the guy that will be on the, on the football team, and he's the perfect inside slot or number three wide receiver for an NFL team because of his hands and his ability to run after the catch. And they say he was around a 4-6, but a lot of people say he's faster than that. I think he's faster than that. Well, he's been the subject of a lot of defenses teams game plans. Uh, yeah, I, exactly. And yeah. that, that's that should tell scouts enough about yeah. if, if you come into a place like Louisville and a coach like Mike Cass has been coaching college football for over 30 years that, hey, this kid's legit and we got to do something defensively to take him away. And that tells you he's a good football player. Because Riley liking him to Ricky Pro. Moore, oh. there he is wide open. This guy's like 7-Eleven, folks, open 24 hours a day. And wide open on that one, got the first down at the 21-yard line. Well, you see the Louisville coaches on the sidelines getting a little antsy because that was a busted coverage. And that's a nice throw by Moore. I mean, he's throwing that ball around 60 yards across the field. Just a great throw and a great catch. And that's now, Chris, with his seventh straight yeah. game with over 100 yards that's, receiving. But that, it, that's probably the quietest 120 yards that I've seen. <laughs> But he does it week in and week out. First down and 10 after the Haas catch. Blitz coming. And it's incomplete at the 22-yard line intended for Bernard. And that was almost picked off. He tried to set up the middle screen. Yeah, actually, they had a play there. And, and, and you know, Adrian Grady didn't do a good job of pass rushing. And when Adrian Grady happened to be right in the middle of the play. I mean, that's how things are going for Louisville. You guys get so even when you're out of yeah. position, you're in position. Yeah, he just stuck the big big claw out there, and, and, and Bernard ran right into the claw. That's at the day. Second down and 10 for the Beavers. Hawking split wide to the top of your screen. Moore. Almost intercepted that time by William Gay, the junior. And Gay's thinking about what could have been. Now, William Gay didn't know that ball was coming that hard. Uh, he's the only returning starter in the secondary from a year ago. But William Gay is smart and understanding his own defense. I don't drop the underneath. Knowing if one's in front, there's another one behind. Perfect position to make a play. He's going to kick himself. Look at that. He's got his helmet off down there on the sidelines. Mad. <laughs> Meanwhile, Haas comes back into the ball game for Oregon State. On third down and 10, 1.34 to go in the third quarter. It's been all Louisville since the first two drives of the ball game. Yeah, pass right here. Over the middle and almost intercepted again as Moore throws into traffic. And Miles had a chance at the pick. There he is, number 22. Fourth down coming up for Oregon State. Well, I like the call here. You have to go for it. I mean, you're down with 36 points. Take your shot. Another well, field goal is not going to help you. But he's trying to force the ball a little bit to Hass. There were five, know, five or six guys in red around him right there. There's other guys. Wheat Brown can catch the ball. 
Here they come on fourth and ten. They've got to get to the 11 yard line for the first down. They're one for one on fourth down today as a result of the fake punt in the first half. Incomplete intended for Hawkins, and Louisville will take over on down. That time he, he had ass open, but they went to the front side. And what he does, he's getting a little bit antsy. He's lo losing his patience in that pocket again because of the constant pressure brought on by Louisville. Right here, see, Hass is on to the left. He's looking all the way to right. Hass breaks open late there. He's got a, he's got a guy open. He's got to throw the strike. But he's getting a little happy feet in there because of the pressure, and he wants to get rid of the football. And Brom still in the ball game with 1.24 to go in the third quarter. His team leading by 36 points. That's in the part of the eye. This is Smith. Colby Smith had a good week last week, actually a couple of weeks ago in their opener against Kentucky. Had 12 carries for almost 75 yards. You know, the, the question might be brought up why Brom is still in there. And remember now, this is, he, he didn't play, he played a little bit last year, but not a lot. So this is really only his second extensive action of a football game. And Bobby Petrino wants to get him as many looks and reps as he can. He's a young guy. And, and you, you hear the name Brom in Louisville, you think the guy's been playing forever. Well, it's only his second year here. Backed up Stephon LaFour's last year. This is Smith off tackle. Looks like he got the first down just beyond the 30-yard line. Some strong running by Colby Smith. Boy, they can really change up the pace on you at the tailback position. Bush can hammer you, and Smith hits you with the speed. You know, people are saying, well, Louisville national contender, Big East. Had the that's not right. Well, I say this to those naysayers, is that the one thing Louisville has, and they're starting to get under Bobby Petrino in the new facilities and, and the new conference, is they have depth. They keep coming with guy after guy after guy, and when you have depth, you have a chance to compete with anybody. Brown's going to go downtown. Iridia. yards for the score if you're going to play man-to-man -man defense and you're going to keep playing it and I got a young quarterback and I got a young receiver that I need to get on board I'm going to go deep too why and this is an unpopular opinion but I'm going to make it it is not Louisville's job to stop themselves it's Oregon State's job to stop them and if they're going to play man-to-man -man coverage then I'm chucking it stop it I know Coach Holtz is probably going to get mad at me for I'm saying that. At the extra point. Maybe Mayday will be with me. <laughs> so you're trying to tell me that because Oregon State is in a man setup, if they were zone, would it make a difference in Louisville it shutting it down maybe a little bit? It would have been a difference in the route. I think it would have been a difference in the route because there's an automatic takeoff route. If you got man coverage, you're playing press coverage, he's going to run a takeoff. And Brom threw a strike, and Uridia just catches and goes for a touchdown. But I, I, at this level, Mark, I, I, we're, we're not playing we Pop Warner. Riley, this Louisville slugger, by the way? Yeah, he might want to hit, hit me on the head with it. <laughs> but look, it's it's the defense's job to stop him. you got to stop him. And, and it's only the third quarter. I'm not going to ask Brom. I'm not going to ask Bush. I'm not going to ask Colby Smith or, or the, anybody else out there to quit playing football. That's not the mentality I want to build. What they're trying to build here is a killer instinct. I know it's a non-popular opinion, but guess what? It's the right opinion if I'm trying to build a national championship team. Now they might call the dogs off a little bit in the fourth quarter. Third quarter, game on. Well, this is an offense that last year averaged about 50 points a game and averaged close to 540 yards a game on offense. Brom really defined himself early in his career last year in Miami at the Orange Bowl in a real thrilling game, albeit a loss by Louisville. 41 to 38 Miami won that game but Brom came in at one point of the game when LaFleur's was knocked a little bit woozy LaFleur's had to come out Brom came in and calmly and coolly with a lot of poise led them down the field for a touchdown no looking back ever since make no mistake about this Mark the Louisville sending a message to voters by the way here's Heron with a seam and Heron could go Heron 
There's a flag down on the play back of the 20. Will it stand? Touchdown, Oregon State. But there's a flag at the 21-yard line. Hold yeah. on. Uh, that's killing him. I mean, a special teams, blocking people in the back, legal use of the hands on special teams, just like that. That's laziness. Pure laziness and discipline. So the touchdown is nullified. Return. Illegal block in the back. Number 11. First down. This will come back. Mark, the 20 yard line. And you had mentioned, uh, yeah, I, you know, Oregon State has a full time special teams yeah. coach. I want to show you something. Here's what's happening the guys are coming down, they're getting behind guys, and they're pushing them in the back. You can block a guy in the back legally, legally, they'll never call it. If you come in and you run up the guy's backside and you throw your hands up like you're trying to avoid them. Even That's though you, you hit do. him in the back, it's yeah, not a yeah, penalty they if you won't ever call hands it up. Because, oh, I, I, I tripped and I slipped into him. Mark, I did it as a pro. A thousand times, I never got called for it because you're looking like you're trying to pull off of them. Yeah, that has really cost Oregon State a couple of times in this ball game. Instead of six points on the board, they push it back to the 11-yard line. Two seconds to go in the third quarter. It has been all Louisville. Bruce Reed, the special teams coach for the Beavers, uh, with a look of dismay and resigned on the sidelines and now having to find something to smile about. And that's the end of the third quarter, 45 minutes in the books. It has been all Cardinals. It started with the defense, Doomerville and Stanley and Johnson. And on offense, big number seven, Iridia and Douglas. And it starts with Braun. We are back for the beginning of the fourth quarter of play, 56 to 13. You can color this afternoon Cardinal Red. And they certainly have protected the crib today. It's been all Louisville after, since the first two drives of the ballgame. Oregon State actually led 10 to nothing. They scored a touchdown and then a field goal in the first two drives of the game. And then Louisville stormed back with three consecutive touchdowns. Oregon State with the ball, second down and nine from their own 12-yard line. Moore hands it off to Bernard. And Bernard is pushed out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Time now for our Napa game track. The defense really changed the tempo of the game for Louisville in their favor. Stanley with the sack there. Doomerville tying an NCAA record with nine sacks in two games. And then Douglas with that touchdown reception. Rom with a career day as well. Several touchdown passes. 14.30 to go in the fourth quarter. Louisville needed a day like this, Mark. If they're going to come out and compete for a national championship or be recognized as a national championship contender, they need to throw a knockout punch. And so far, they have. Bernard, Oregon State, working on its running game. They were last in the nation last year. Averaging just 70.7 .7 yards per game on the ground. That was Bernard out of Boca Raton on the run. First down and 10. I like Bernard as a running back. He's, like, he's low leverage. He keeps his, his legs driving. And he delivers blows. I mean, he's a, he's a small back that runs like a big back. And if I was Michael Bush, and Michael Bush is starting to do this and do it better and better, but I'd watch film on Bernard to see how he does it. And Michael Bush is... Michael Bush will become more and more dangerous when he decides that he's 250 pounds and he hits it up in there like he's done today. Over the middle, it's complete. Hass. Hass brought down to the 35-yard line. Has another Oregon State first down. Mike Hass, all Pac-10 last year and this year. And you go back to his sophomore season when he caught passes for over 1,000 yards. And critics dismissed it because they say he was playing opposite James Newsom, who was a very good receiver at the time for Oregon State. But then Haas comes back the next year and has another 1,000-yard-plus receiving season. So he silenced his critics there. You know, I like guys with confidence, and Mike Haas certainly has confidence, not by his words or things that he says, but by his actions, by walking on and doing the things he's done at Oregon State and what he will do in the NFL. Play pick by Moore. 
incomplete at the 45-yard line. No flag on the play intended once again for Hats. Good job by Council on coverage. I mean, he ran the route. He read the mail. He read his mail. We talked about some of the stadium expansion here to come at Louisville and the practice facility that should be completed by December. But big things happening at Oregon State as well for Mike Riley's program. They just finished a renovation of uh, Isra Stadium and they have an expansion going on there as well. A proposed one in the next couple of years and they just finished the, an $80 million renovation on the stadium. Second down and 10, Bernard tripped up and goes down to the 38-yard line. Evanson Bernard out of Boca Raton, Florida, had 13 carries for a total of 92 yards and a couple of touchdowns last week in their win against Boise State. Scored on runs of 5 and 51 yards, and he really is the great surprise of the year offensively for Oregon State. Picked up the offensive scheme and system a little bit faster than Walker and Wright, the guys who are behind him right now. His father, Evan, watching back at home in Boca Raton, Florida. Hawkins, Wheat, Brown, and Hass, the three receivers here on third down and eight for Oregon State. Complete at midfield. That'll be another Oregon State first down. The tight end, Jason Vanderbilt. You know, a coaching point to be made. I don't know if you noticed, Mark, they went on a hard count. And the Louisville offensive lineman jumped, which you want to do if you're the center, is go ahead and snap the football. The quarterback's got to be taught to be ready for that. You get a free play knowing that you got the five yards. You can take your shot down the field. That might, but it might have been one of the better thrown passes on the day by Matt Moore. Moore, the former quarterback, starting quarterback at UCLA, transferred. To some people that feel that tell me that he might be a little bit better off being out of the Los Angeles area, a little less pressure on him. Jackson, Wheat, Brown, and Haas, the receiver. Flag the flag. And flags down. Offense, five-yard penalty. Chris, how do you have a delay game penalty when you're down 56-13? Well, you aren't you in hurry-up mode? You don't get. I'm out not of, five beta cap. You don't get out of the huddle. You don't snap <laughs> the ball before the play clock runs out. That's. Uh, I don't. Uh, you know. I. I think they. They pretty much packed the bags and are heading back to Corvallis. I mean, they're running the football and that. You know, Coach Riley's working on what he feels he maybe needs to improve his team on. Moore threw a nice pass to Hass, but Hass couldn't hang on to it. Not going to see that that often. And for more on quarterback Matt Moore, let's go downstairs to Rob. Well, Mark, Oregon State's defensive coordinator, Mark Banker, was good friends with some of Moore's high school coaches. And those high school coaches gave him a call and said, hey, you know, we, we got a guy that you should probably look at who's leaving UCLA. So Oregon State really did some diligent work on him. They, they looked at all his UCLA film. They saw about 200 throws he did from high school on tape. They got a lot of opinions, and but they wanted to meet him. So they brought him up for a visit, offered him, and... Boy, he, he's really uh, performed very well for them outside of perhaps today, even though today though, he's been under a lot of duress. Yeah, no doubt, Rob. This time, hands it off to Bernard, who's brought down at the 50-yard line. 12 yards short of the first down. Under 12 minutes to play. Oregon State trailing 56 to 13. And for Louisville, boy, this is really making a statement to the people watching them for the first time, a national television audience. Moore, meanwhile, has thrown the ball almost 50 times. And, Chris, never a good sign when your quarterback has to throw it that much, right? No, it's not. <laughs> and, and especially knowing that this team, Louisville's defense, was designed to take away the throw. You didn't force the defense of Louisville to make any adjustments as far as their game plan goes. Louisville corners have done a nice job holding up today. Well, Haas finds a man down in the middle of the field. That's Josh Hawkins out of Long Beach, California. I'll tell you, Moore can throw. If he gets time, he can throw. The only problem that I've seen so far with Matt Moore is that his ability to move around the pocket. Now, remember, he's only played five games at UCLA. So this is only really his seventh game. But you see, when he sets his feet, steps, and throws, he's not going to miss very often. He's got a bright future ahead of him. Technically, he's sound, and he'll get good coaching by Coach Riley and his staff. Hasn't started since going to College of Canyons after transferring from UCLA. Pass and Jackson split to the bottom of your screen. Hawkins also in. Moore goes up top for Hass. Hangs on for a touchdown. Man, 
Davis. He got a set of hands. Yeah, he does. And Gavin Smart had great coverage on him, but when you have hands and strong hands, that's the difference. When you have strong hands and, and catch a ball like that, it's nice. And, and you'll see Matt Moore, again, when he gets time, watch him. Good ball fake. He gets his feet set, step, and throw. He's going to throw on target, and he throws to a spot. There's Hass not giving up in the route. Does a nice job of adjusting on the football, and he showed late hands. See, if you show early hands, the DB gets his hands up there. If you show late hands, the DB doesn't have time to get his hands up and knock it out. Cerna knocks it through, and it's 56 to 20 with 10.40 to go. We're going to take a timeout. Stick around. Back at Papa John Stadium, Louisville leading by 36. Cerna kicks it deep for the Beaver. Douglas takes it out of the end zone for the Cards. And Douglas fights out beyond the 20 to the 23-yard line. Let's see who comes out at quarterback for Louisville. But first, despite the scoreboard, Haas with another great big day for Oregon State. 163 yards. That's the seventh straight game where he's caught balls for over 100 yards. And Hunter Cantwell now from Paducah, Kentucky, is the new quarterback for Louisville. 6'4", 230 pounds, a redshirt freshman. Walk-on who was redshirted in 2004. Comes out slinging. And fires a completion to Montrell Jones, but there's a flag down at the 41-yard line. Now here's a question to ask yourself. Why is Coach Petrino coming out slinging with Cantwell? Why is he slinging with Cantwell? Well, because if Brom does, it gets hurt throughout the season, you want to have this kid at least have some time in throwing the football in a real live game. And I'm going to go back to the fact that it, this is valuable experience that Cantwell can get. You see Brom there, career highs for 368 and 5 TDs. Wow. Pass interference, number 24 on the defense. The penalty is declined. First down. But, you, uh, you, you know, it's not Bobby Petrino's job to stop themselves. I mean, he's got an obligation to get his team ready just in case Brom goes down. Oregon State uh, rated as one of the tougher opponents on Louisville's schedule, and all indications are they're ready to take on the daunting task of what lies ahead. Looking for some big game. That time, George Stripling running it. Third-string tailback. Number 24. Louisville members of the Big East Conference this year. They'll play at South Florida next week and then against Florida Atlantic at home, North Carolina at home. Okay, right there, West the 15th. Yeah. That's right. The other thing, Mark, is I listened to Mark D'Antonio, the head coach of Cincinnati, on his drive show down here, and they were they were getting ready to play a game. He wasn't talking about that game. They were talking about Louisville because Louisville put it on them 70 to 7. And he said that's something that you don't forget. So don't don't take Cincinnati out of that mix. Stripling, still on his feet, down to the 42-yard line. But a nice block from his starting guard, Quarterman. Stripling, the six-foot, 186-pound redshirt freshman, with a nice run. Players shaking up down on the field for Oregon State. I hope it's just cramping the way that leg is sticking up in the air like that. Oregon State next week has a tough conference game against Pac-10 opponent Arizona State. They just need to get out of here with what they have left and jump on the plane, head back home. They have Arizona State, Washington State at home, and a tough one at Cal against Cal at Cal and at UCLA. Arizona, Washington, Stanford, and finish up uh, against Oregon. Time out on the field. We'll take one, too. Fans of all ages here in Louisville, Kentucky, watching their Cardinals, ranked number 11 in the country, leading 56 to 20. A little over nine minutes to go now in the fourth quarter. A devastating and lethal show offensively and defensively by the Cardinals today. And the beat goes on. 
under the direction of quarterback Hunter Cantwell, who threw for over 5,000 yards and 52 touchdowns in his high school career here in Paducah, Kentucky. Uh, Hunter, Hunter's not exactly off target either. I mean, those are two strikes that he's thrown in difficult passes. You think a, a freshman and see Brian Brom come here, he's... It came too. You know, I, I admire the kid for coming and taking on a challenge in the Brom family. Nice, solid backup. And again, I like the fact that Bobby's getting him some throws. He'll have most of the fourth quarter to himself. And we have a whistle down on the field before the play was snapped. Delay, number 14 on the offense. Five yard penalty, remains first down. ABC's College Football features the following regional action today. Number 13, Miami against number 20, Clemson. Number 21, Oklahoma against UCLA. San Diego State against Ohio State. Buckeyes trying to bounce back after being bounced by Texas at home last week. And Pittsburgh taking on Nebraska. It'll be interesting to see what Coach Stoops does with Adrian Peterson. Yes. Uh, forgot to go to class and paying a penalty. Troy Smith getting a start at Ohio State. Got most of the reps. Not expecting Justin Wick to play in that game. Time out on the field. We'll take one, two. Back after this. ESPN's College Football. Brought to you by Kia Motors. Kia, the power to surprise. And MasterCard. Log on to ESPN.com. Keyword MasterCard for the Fan Addict Showdown. Well, the late, great Johnny Unitas would have been proud of the offensive and defensive firepower that they have stockpiled here at Louisville. Up top, wide open. Another one, Montrell Jones. Is that running it up, Chris? I'm not, no. And, and you'll never get me to say it is. I'll be saying... Just posing the question because there will be critics that say that it is. That's fine. And you know what? Bobby Petrino is the one that has to answer it, but I'm not one of those critics. And why? Because they're going to sit there and play man-to-man -man coverage. you got a young quarterback that's your backup that has had not had any game experience. You want him in here to throw the ball to see the defense, make the adjustments, and make plays. It's not for Louisville's job to stop Louisville. They're not playing Louisville. It's Oregon State's job to stop Louisville. And that's an unpopular opinion, I know, but it's one that I will stand by and defend because we're talking about Division I major college football here, not not uh, Upper Arlington Pee Wee football. I agree with you, for the record. Uh, no, you don't. Yeah, no, no, I do. I just pose the question. I know there are going to yeah. be people that say that, you know, they're running it up on Oregon State, but I'm with you. If I'm a second-team player yeah. and come into the ball game, I don't think it's fair for a coach to tell a uh, second-team or third-string player, lay down for your opponent. Don't make a play. Let's yeah. go back to the studio, to our first-team guy, Reese Davis. All right, Reese, eight twenty five to go. Those who were wondering what happened to the potent Louisville offense from a year ago after the Kentucky game where they scored, I quote, only 31 points, end quote. Well, here's your answer. They got 63 on the board right now with 825 still left to go. I, you know, my, Coach O'Reilly might feel different about this situation. But, again, tough. I mean, that's the way it goes. Aaron, who took one back for a touchdown, but it was called back for a block in the back. This time takes it out to the 30-yard line. Reese, tell us about Adrian Peterson in Oklahoma. Nice 
All right, thanks a lot, Reese. You know, interesting point there, Chris. With Oklahoma struggling, is it a shrewd decision by your head coach to bench your starting tailback? All right, well, I, yeah, I think either you're going to stand for something or you're not. And okay. if that's the rule, then you, you bench him. And you know who, who I would I would go to the seniors and say, hey, who, this kid's great, but what's he doing missing class? And I would jump hit. It's his responsibility to go to class. If I'm a senior on that football team, I know I've got a big road game at UCLA, and this guy has the gall not to go to class, knowing that he's going to hurt our football team. That's a one, two, three, me yeah. decision instead of a one, two, three, team decision. Self policing and self equity of the team always a good thing. Ryan Gunderson, now the new quarterback for Oregon State. Gunderson, a 6'5, 226 pound sophomore from Oregon, Portland, Oregon. On second down and five. Swanigan and Hawkins, the receivers, and Jackson also in. That was Nate Wright that time. Knight brought down near the line of scrimmage with seven and a half minutes to go. You almost get the feeling like Oregon State's team that's up, keeping it on the ground, taking their time back to the huddle. Coach Riley even has the headsets off. He'll get him back. He's a good football coach. He'll bounce back. Oregon State going to suffer its first loss in its last six games, falling to two and one. Last year, team as a team, they went seven and five overall, a five and three in conference play. Getting ready for the conference portion of their schedule next week, beginning with Arizona State. Third and three for Gunderson. Fires incomplete at the 41-yard line. And Jennifer Vandiver, the tight end. Fourth down coming up for Oregon State. Down. Sending in the punt team, just under seven minutes to go. Now this is, uh, here's where I'd say it might be getting a little tough if they come in and try to block the punt. Then that, that might be a little bit much, but I'm not going to tell my offensive players to stop playing. Elijah Daniel going back deep for Louisville. Standing at his own 21-yard line. And a flag down. Oregon State just hasn't quite gotten it right up front today. Seen several motion penalties, delay of game penalties. Let's see now. Louisville guy jumped, and, and, and what, if he drew the guy, offensive guy off, they can call that sometimes now. The Louisville, Louisville player jumped into the neutral zone. If that caused the offensive player to move, then they'll call that against Off Louisville. Sides, defense. There you go. Five yard penalty. The first down. Remains fourth down. Ooh. I would measure that. No, check it. Results in the first down. Thank you. Thank you. Back comes the offense for Oregon State. You know, something we haven't touched on today, Chris, is that Louisville did have a bye week and it presented a unique challenge for Bobby Petrino's coaching staff the fact that it came this early in the season so they did something interesting they gave them a, a day off after the Kentucky game came back and got to work for a couple after that and then went ones against ones uh, almost a training camp type atmosphere and really seems to have paid off in, in the win here against Oregon State they came out physical Mark and what I like is that and this is something that they're gonna have to do throughout their schedule because there are going to be times where they might struggle a little bit, is that they took some shots. They were down 10-0, yet they stayed within their com their game plan. They kept their composure and come out and, and delivered a death blow to Oregon State. Jackson made the catch on the play, picked up a few. Second down coming up and about six to go for Oregon State. First meeting ever between these two teams. Uh, we'll go down as uh, an indelible one for Louisville, a very convincing victory. Stands 63 to 20 right now with 623 to go in the ball game. That's Nate Wright. He's seen some action today along with Jim Tavis Walker. Check that out. That was a Colby Smith. And that was Nate Wright who's brought down short of midfield. Radiate Brandon Cox making the play for the Cardinals. And they seem to have quite a bit of depth up front on that defensive line, yeah, that, Chris. Again, Mark, that's why I think they have the ability to to compete for a national championship. You see the national championship teams, they do have depth. 
at all positions, and one of the biggest positions is where they need front. Coach Cassidy talked about it. That, that's the biggest difference maybe from your, your father's Louisville team is the fact that they do have depth everywhere. That quarterback with Cantwell. Gunderson back to pass, fires a strike completed midfield to tight end Swinigan. And he got the first down at the 47-yard line. Don't forget, coming up next, it's the College Game Day scoreboard show presented by Acura. Immediately following the game, 524 to go. Well, it's good to see the young kids from Oregon State coming in and, and not giving up fighting right there. Swinigan did a good job. He almost committed, no pun intended, to Cardinal Sin by catching the ball at the front of the uh, first down marker, going behind it, but he did a great effort to get the first down. Hawkins put to the top of the screen. Pass not in the ball game. Incomplete intended for Josh Hawkins. 4.56 to play. Elvis Doomerville right there, number 58. Maybe solely responsible for turning the momentum in favor of Louisville about the midway point of the first quarter. Got himself a couple of sacks and really established defensive thrust and pressure up front. Uh, you ask about the name Elvis Doomerville. Uh, tells me his mom was an Elvis Presley fan, and thus the name. Plays more like a, a Dwight. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he's got the he's got the hip gyrations like Elvis on his pass rush. Right. <laughs> he, he hasn't left the building yet. <laughs> Doomerville with another big day had six sacks against Kentucky a couple of weeks ago to set an NCAA record and then added a few more to his total today. Now, speed and the ability to finish and. and you know, after today, Mark, they have all these watch lists for every award known to man. One of the best awards and the biggest award is the Lombardi Trophy. He's got to be on the watch list, or at least he's made a statement that, to get himself up there and have people start taking a look at Elvis. I mean, he's a special pass rusher. And had ten sacks a season ago, already has nine on this year. Third down and four. Gunderson stands in the pocket, fires a completion to Hawkins for the first down at the 33-yard line. For more on Doomerville, let's go to Rob. Well, you guys are exactly right. He is opening up a lot of eyes. I spoke with uh, ESPN draft expert Mel Kuyper about him late last night. You know, and he, he said basically the same thing that you guys did. You know, he's not all that big, but as a pass-rushing situational sub in the NFL, there is definitely a place for him. He said, you know, he's an interesting kid to keep an eye on all year with that 6'7 wingspan and his sack numbers this year, it's going to be awfully hard to ignore him come draft time. No doubt. Put people on notice. Yeah, don't forget, too, now, he, he's got the athleticism to play special teams. Pass incomplete. Well, Zoe Axon said, hey, man. He wasn't watching. I'm, I'm he could have had a pick. <laughs> yeah, he was breaking on the ball. Jackson hit him right in the knees. Second down and ten. See ball, catch ball. He didn't see the ball. He's going for the kill shot. Three thirty-six to go. And all Louisville. It's the second half of the first period. You know, we've been talking about this running up the score, and I don't think it is. I think if they're playing football, I'm going to be interested to see how Coach Riley reacts to Coach Petrino at the end of the game. Stick around for that action. And run it to the left edge. Number 34, Patrick Fuller. That was Fuller. And meanwhile, don't forget tonight at 745 Eastern Time, 445 Pacific on College Football Primetime, presented by Polaroid, Florida State, number eight, taking on Boston College. BC's first game in their new conference, the ACC. Boston College, as you mentioned, Mark averaged 317 pounds up front. All five guys returning starters for that team against a Mickey Andrews defense that brings it every time. That'll be a great matchup on ESPN. Hawkins and Jackson, the receivers on the play. Pass is complete to the tight end, Haynes, from Gunderson. Number 10, Ryan Gunderson, completes a pass to number 83, Dan Haynes. Gunderson's forward progress going to be marked at the 24-yard line. Ryan Gunderson filling in for Matt Moore. 
who was pulled a couple of series ago. Matt Moore right there on the sidelines now. Uh, Gunderson looks good. He's throwing some nice balls. I'll tell you that, that the front five big guys, Oregon State, have got to be tired. I mean, they've been facing wave after wave of fresh red shirts coming at them. And they've thrown the ball close to, it's got to be almost 62, 63 times. Yeah. Fourth and two. Pass complete to the tight end. Haynes has the first down, under two minutes to go. Yeah, Haynes has been impressive. And with the win today, Louisville now with the second longest current win streak in NCAA football behind USC. And of course, Utah had its win streak ended a couple of nights ago. Ayers was at 18. First down and 10, approaching one minute to go. Jackson split to the bottom of your screen. They hand it off. Number 34, Patrick Fuller, the 5'11 freshman from Covina, California that time. Don't forget, coming up next, College Game Day scoreboard presented by Acura. Reese Davis and the crew in the studio bringing you up to speed on all the scores and highlights from a busy Saturday afternoon in college football and some previews from the big games coming up tonight. Second down and eight and just another day for just another Brom. Brian's turn this time, second down and eight. Haynes. He lost the ball. He's marked out of bounds at the one-yard line. At 54 seconds to go. And, and just like I talk about Coach Petrino, it's, you know, it's Louisville's backup's job to stop Oregon State. They haven't done it, man. I admire them for making this game as long as they can trying to score. Chris, you, you're a defensive player. Does the defense come up here and try and do something and make a stand if you're Louisville? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, these kids are fighting for playing jobs. Anytime there's a snap, Mark, you try to make something happen. Anytime. First and goal. Touchdown, Oregon State. Fuller. It's a good job of Patrick Fuller not not trying to juke and jive anywhere. He just put his head down and made a hole himself, falling a big lead block through there on the counter on the goal line. Boy, Shooting did a nice job of leading him through. Cerna in for the extra point. Wasn't pretty, yeah, it was but they got it down. It was tipped. After attempt, number 13, Alexis Serna is good. Here's a little 63, Oregon State 27. And, uh, looks like uh, Fuller's got a bit of a malfunction with his hat. Gunderson, meanwhile, looking pretty impressive on that drive. On a beautiful afternoon here in Louisville, Kentucky, the home of the greatest, Muhammad Ali, down on Muhammad Ali Boulevard last night. And, down on 4th Street, and saw and heard a lot of Oregon State Beaver fans down there in front of our hotel, making a little bit of a ruckus. Good-naturedly, of course. It's a long trick back to Corvallis, though. They traveled pretty well for yeah, this they game. Did. We I, see some of them. I was surprised, and that, you know that's a good thing. It's a good thing for the program. Now, now. What would be really, if, I, if I'm Mike Riley and I got 63 put up on me right. and just so I'm going to compete, you know what I'm doing? I'm calling timeout. I got three left. I'm calling timeouts left and right. <laughs> and blitzing. Here we go. Strip link. Takes it out near the 20 yard line. Louisville will improve to 2-0 and coming off that win a couple of weeks ago against Kentucky. This was a bit of a trap game for them, but they didn't take the bait. Louisville had been studying Oregon State going back as far as February. And there's a look at Elvis Doomerville. He almost got the feeling they, you know, they weren't 
overly pleased with their win at Kentucky. And, and Coach Petrino had to remind them, hey, guys, you beat an in-state rival on hostile ground, 70,000 people. You won the football game, and they came out to prove a point today, and they made a point to me. This is a darn good football team that should raise a lot of eyebrows. Run it over the right edge, stripling. And the points pile up for Louisville, 63 in this one. Total of 553 total yards. Much along the lines of last year's prolific crew. And this one will go in the books as a 63 to 27 win. The Cardinals improving to 2 and 0, oh, the Beavers falling to 2 and 1. Next week Mike Riley's crew headed back to Corvallis to take on Arizona State in a league contest. Look out Big East. Here come the Cardinals. The final score once again 63 to 27. Number 11, Louisville. For Rob Stone, Chris Bielman, our entire gang, I'm Mark Jones. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Hope you enjoyed it, folks. Goodbye.